Tapping with Reef Bum is sponsored by Bulk Reef Supply and Ecotech Marine. What's going on, Reef Builders? I'm Jake Adams. What's going on, everybody? Jake Adams from Reef Builders here. What's going on, Reef Builders? What's going on, Reef Builders? What's going on, Reef Builders? I'm Jake Adams. 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 Reef Builders, I'm Jake Adams. What's going on, my fellow Reef Builders? I'm Jake Adams. What's going on, Reef Builders? I'm Jake Adams. Good morning, Reef Builders. Jake Adams back at you with another awesome video. What's up, guys? Jake Adams here. What's going on, Reef Builders? Jake Adams here. I need for the fish to pass before I can actually you know, make the video. Um, but the, the corals there are just so freaking healthy. Water's clear, tons of fish. Kind of sounds to me like he's the ultimate, ultimate possible Reef Builder. <laughs> you definitely like stoked that fire again a little bit. Someone come here. Of course, of course. You don't have to be by yourself. Simon, thank you so much for your time and your help. I was really thrilled to discover such a unique ecosystem as Simon's Bay that What's going on, Mark? My reefing brother. How you doing, man? I am always you know, really energized and motivated when we have a topic that I'm really passionate about. Yeah, I think we're gonna get a little uh, riled up and ranty on this one. I have a beer on reserve, just mm -hmm. in case. A double, double your <laughs> pleasure right here. I might need it. I'm going to steal a line from Mark there. I, uh, I definitely have a beer on reserve, and I know I'm going to need it. <clears throat> uh, I want to thank Ellis Barton for allowing us to use... <clears throat> this is tough. <laughs> this is tough. That's a, that's, a tough uh, that's a tough video to watch. It's, uh, it, it makes me... Uh, very happy, but also very sad. But uh, thank you, Ellis Barton, for allowing us to use that very special uh, video tribute to Jake that was put together soon after he passed away. And um, But on the show tonight, we would like to celebrate Jake Adams, the person himself, talk about his passion and love for the marine aquarium hobby, the impact you know, he had on the hobby and the people around the world, I mean, around the world and, and, you know, talk about what we can do to keep his legacy alive. I expect a, a lot of stories to be told tonight. And we got one hell of a, um, a crew joining us and, um, I'm going to, I'm going to introduce these folks and this is going to be kind of a, uh, a random introduction here they're not going to actually be in the order that you see them appearing on the screen we've got tonight windsor adams jake's wife and um will reef make an appearance there uh, windsor perhaps maybe uh, we'll see maybe. hopefully he, okay. they've gotten him to sleep now but hopefully okay okay <laughs> we have uh jake's brother luke adams chris meckley from aci that your buddy matt peterson doing? Um, who, who may be leaving us pretty quickly, but uh, hopefully he could stick around for a little while. Uh, Mark Vanderwall is in the house. Hey, what's that in there, Mark? We've got uh, Chris Carney, Rob Mouget, Sanjay, Dr. Hey. Sanjay Yoshi is in the house. Where's your buddy, uh, Mr. Paletta? Well, I don't know. He's technologically incompetent. <laughs> I struggled to get him. <laughs> <laughs> we, uh, well, hopefully he's going to make it at, at some point in time. I don't know. Maybe I need to text him or something like that or message him. But uh, we'll, uh, hopefully Mike will be joining us. Um, we've got Joe and Tony Capriata. What's going on there, guys? Um, we've got um, Chris Carney. What's happening there, Chris? And um, who did I uh, 
Vincent, Vincent. Vincent Chalius is in the house. Vincent is driving right now. What's happening there, Vincent? And hopefully we're not going to hopefully we're not going to lose him uh, because of the uh, the cell phone reception out there. But uh, that's awesome. Julian um, Sprung is coming in on an international flight um, and will hopefully be joining us uh, in progress. Did I miss anybody? Did I miss anybody? We're all uh, here and accounted for. Did you mention so, Rob? Um, yep. Okay. Yep. Yep. Thanks, um, Chris. There's a lot. Of, <laughs> there's a lot of people I see in the uh, in the live stream, and um, I encourage uh, you folks to drop your comments. Love for Jake. Questions. We've got a um, a lot of folks that um, have a lot of stories to share. So I don't know how long this is going to be. You know, it's going to be how forever <laughs> long we want it to be, but. Um, We've had some long ones on this show, and I think uh, Chris, you, Jake, and I—we probably had the uh, the record for the longest three hours. Uh, something, something like is that, that. Three hours and it's like twenty minutes or something like oh that. So <laughs> maybe, we'll, maybe we'll try. Maybe we'll try to do like a marathon here and just go for twenty-four <laughs> hours or something like that, and people can just drop on and off and what have you. So, um, but thanks, folks, for tuning in to the live stream. And um, yeah, I was. Um, a little nervous in terms of the technical aspects of this thing because I've never zoomed before on this live stream, but it seems to be working fine. But if there are any issues in terms of uh, you guys, the guests being able to hear me or you folks out there not uh, being able to hear folks, just um, just let me know. So, uh, Windsor, do you want to start off by um, by saying you know something, whatever uh, is in your heart? Yeah. No, thank you. I just really appreciate everyone that's tuned in to this. You know, this is really, really special. I mean, we just celebrated the one year anniversary of Jake leaving us and it's been really, really hard, but seeing everyone on the screen right now just absolutely warms my heart so much because, you know, these people, you know, missing some, but these are some of the closest people to Jake's life and heart you know he would tell me stories of all of these people that you see and i'm like who are these guys <laughs> and now that i know them i know why jake loved them so much you know he found kindred spirits in all these people and you know it's really it's an honor to be able to sit here with them and be able to talk about jake and share our mutual love for him and how much he means to all of us. Um, yeah, I just really want to say that I appreciate everyone sticking with reef builders too. You know, reef ce celebrating and sticking with reef builders is, is, you know, helping me too. And Jake would be really, really proud of the team that we're trying to put together um, to keep his legacy alive honestly. So I really appreciate everyone sticking by us and supporting us. Um, it's, it's meant the world to me to see the outpouring of love to continue continuing, you know, for him because he was honestly the best, you know, I have my son now because of him, our little son reef, who's crying right now <laughs> in the background. <laughs> I hope you guys can't hear him, but he, uh, he's, he's having no. a time got his mommy right now. <laughs> Um, it's, it's been really, really hard as you can imagine, maybe, you know, raising my son without Jake, you know, other than being an Aquarius, being a father was the next thing he wanted to do in his life. I, I'm pretty sure he's told all of you that yep. being a dad was the ultimate goal and he is a dad. <laughs> he is. You know, Reef has a father and he's the coolest, most amazing father he will ever have. And because of all of you, that life, you know, that person will be known to him from all these stories, everything that I'm going to hear tonight, you know, I'll be able to play this for him in the future. And that's really special. So thanks again for, you know, supporting me and supporting Reef Builders, supporting Reef. And I just love all of you. Thank you. Thank, thanks, Windsor. Yeah. And Jake's here with us tonight. 
Yeah. Awesome. Oh, let me. I, I've got. Uh, so I think the Meckley's passed along. Then let me. Um, let me bring that little. Um, what you're talking about there. So that is the. Um, the reef builders hat. With the headphones. Yeah. On the little shrine there. Yeah. 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 This was. Yeah. That was his hat. He was wearing that hat. So I got that back, which is really special. This is the hat. Yeah. Yeah. It's very well loved. So, you know, I'm, I'm never going to wash it. <laughs> it has all of Jake's essence in it. <laughs> Joe, is this, is this the time to talk about that story? Or you want to wait in a little bit to, uh, to talk yeah, no, about that's, that? That's, that's fine. Um, that, that shrine, um, I was the first uh, one to, to, I guess see it in the U.S. Um, my wife was incredibly helpful. We we uh, we got word from Vincent, and you know it, it was a whole process to get Jake back, and some hard decisions had to be made. Um, and we had luckily Jake had friends overseas in Taiwan that were instrumental in working with the U.S. Embassy there. Um, and it was Windsor's decision, and and maybe his uh, other family members to to cremate him. Um, get the paperwork in order for that, and then book him on a China Airlines flight to return back to the U.S. And coming in through LAX, I live in Los Angeles here. Um, so I went out on a Sunday morning. And the irony, like I just shared previously, was was there to clear Jake like some of the coral shipments we cleared for Jake. <laughs> so... <laughs> Um, went to customs and um, went to the airline cargo terminal. And um, when they handed me this this crate with it inside, it was a surreal moment. And I was a little disconnected. I wasn't thinking straight. But, um, you know, having it, I, I was like, well, what, what do I do? Do I put it in the trunk? Do I put it in the back seat? I'm like, well, Jake, I, I'm going to put it in the front seat. It's where he belongs. I put it in the front seat, um, strapped him in so it couldn't fall forward. And then we have a famous street called 104th Street in Los Angeles. And anytime any of the aquarists head to Los Angeles, you want to go to 104th Street. At least you used to want to go. That's where all the action was. You had Quality Marine, Sea Dwellings, Underwater World, Pacific Aqua Farms, and others. Now some of them have moved on because the rents have gotten high. But that's the street. And I know Jake, if I was to pick him up at 104th Street, I'm sorry, at LAX, he would have wanted to go down 104th Street. So I played his music of Bonobos and um, took him down and, <laughs> and stopped awesome. him for the quality. And um, it was it was just a little uh, ceremonial trip for him. So um, we did that and then uh, sent um, sent him to to Windsor. Um, yeah. So I get to see it again. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I really me, appreciate um, that. Go ahead, Windsor. I was just going to say, I really appreciate that, Joe. Yeah, okay, yeah, for making that happen, you know, he would have yeah. loved that. Yeah, hundred percent. Still have his air. What he would have wanted to do. Yeah. Yeah, I put it on my desk. There was like three or four stickers that they slap all over the box, and uh, so instead of just letting them throw away, I put one on my desk. So every time I go to work, I've got a blue um, airway bill from Jake right there. So in spirit, <laughs> he's, he's there. Special. Yeah. Let me. Awesome. Um, let me share some comments from the people that are tuning in right now. Ryan felt Jake and reef therapy was so amazing, inspirational, and educational because he was obsessed with corals and it's all he wanted to talk about. I would learn so much and be inspired every episode. Um, Alex Correa, what's happening there, Alex? Another historic event. Thanks everyone of all. Uh, of, uh, thanks everyone of you on the screen for this. Jake's work and love for corals recognized. Um, Reef Exotica by Luis Aceves. What's happening there, Luis? Thank you for that super chat. Um, hi, Windsor. It's uh, Geneva and Kingston watching with my dad. We miss Jake and can't wait to meet Reef. Um, uh, Will in March. I'll be there for Reef Stock. <laughs> when, is, when is Reef Stock, um, Windsor? That is that... first weekend of March. So, whatever those dates are three, four, gotcha. two, three, something like that. Yeah. Gotcha. Yeah. Um, Jason Langer, what's happening there, Jason? Jake turned his uh, hobby into his extended family. So true. Um, true. Remy, Bahama Lama Coral, thanks, man, for that hey, super Remy. chat. Hey, Remy. It's just hey, tradition Remy. at this point. Yeah, Remy. Love y'all. Hey. Yeah, Remy's a um, Ray Hill, well said, Windsor. We as a community love you and love you all and Jake. Love you. Um, 
Adam Pratt Garage. Hey guys, so many great people on the stream. Keep that love for Jake coming for sure. I'm Forever. doing my best here to like look at these, uh, get all these comments. Um, Michael Nicosia, hopefully I'm pronouncing that correctly. Jake made the hobby so accessible. He made tough concepts easy with his knowledge, passion, and charm. I will truly miss him, but his legacy lives in my tank with the lessons he taught in his videos. Okay. Awesome. Um, awesome. Keep, keep those comments coming, folks. So, um, let's uh so everybody let's let's uh let's share some more stories about jake i mean he was you know not only the face of reef builders but he was essentially the face of of reef keeping you know the reef keeping hobby he was as as that one viewer mentioned he was so passionate about it and it was obvious whether he was just doing a youtube video or having a conversation with you face to face and he was also very you know passionate about the animals the corals that we all keep in our tanks but um so maybe that's a good starting point. Chris uh, Meckley, man, you um, you told me a story uh, a while ago about Jake. It was uh, at a trade show, I think, that um, Jake kind of helped you out and in a pinch about uh, uh, it was a, a, a very rare fish that wasn't doing so hot. You, do you mind sharing that story? Oh, you're talking about the um, the king eye. Yeah. Yes. Um, well, that was, um, that. you know, Jake and I, um, this is um, kind of, I surprised a lot of people, but Jake and I, when we first met, we really didn't uh, click. And, um, you know, <laughs> <I'm we, shocked. laughs> uh, yeah, I mean, everybody in here is shaking their head, but, um, you know, we, we, we were very, both had strong, you know, beliefs and personalities. And, um, you know, we, we didn't click right away. And uh, for the first probably three or four years that we knew each other, uh, we were cordial. And um, that was probably about it. We didn't really call each other or talk um, unless we saw each other to show, and it was usually pretty brief. And then I brought in a king eye tiger angelfish when Madagascar opened up, and I brought it to a uh, reef show and um, put it into my reef aquarium. And I told him that I was, something special was going to be at the uh, in, in my tank. I didn't tell him what it was because I knew it was a, one of his favorite fish. And he walked by. He's like, "So where is it? What is it?" And he just stopped and he was just blown away. He's like, what are you doing with a king eye at a show? <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, you know, we had the fish for probably a week and um, it was nice and healthy. It looked great, brought, brought it to the show. And uh, towards, uh, I guess, the last day, it was not looking very good. And um, unfortunately, this fish ended up getting velvet. Um, while I guess it probably had it before we took it there, but it um, ended up perishing. And um, I actually have, so I still have it. It's a popsicle in my in my freezer um, <laughs> at the farm. It is the most expensive fish I ever purchased in my life. Um, but yeah, that was after that. I mean, we we, we were talking a lot before then, but um, after that, we really really talked a lot, and it was really got us. You know, we really got close. Um, and I think the king eye was probably the thing that made us uh, that brought us together because you know we just. Um, he realized that I'm just not an average hobbyist and I, you know, knew what I was talking about and we actually clicked and agreed on a lot of things. And, uh, I guess Rob's got his uh, King eye now, <laughs> <laughs> but that was, um, I think that was probably, a, a one of the moments of Jake and Mai's relationship that, um, I think where we really got close, just, um, talking about that fish at a refill and, um, it's uh, something uh, I'll miss talking to him about because that was uh, almost a daily conversation sometimes. You know, we'd go a month or two without talking, and then we'd go every day talking because we just got triggered with something, and we'd just think about it. And it was just like we'd stop talking. I'd get busy at work or whatnot, or he'd get a call, and it would go off. And then the next day, he'd be like, okay, we got to continue this. And it just you – know, and that was like that for years. And um, you know, that's a void in my life that I – have not been able to fill um and i'm sure that's a point in a lot of people's lives um that's on here that uh talk to him on a regular basis uh that was just jake you know when he when he wanted to talk to you about something you know it, it was always always made you think always um making you uh, it's, it's something about him made you want to be better because jake was just good and he knew so much about reefing and um yeah I miss him, um, and uh, one day we'll see him again. Yeah. I always knew when you were talking to him, Chris. <laughs> Why is that? <laughs> like I could just, I just knew. Well, Jake's 
attitude and his voice and everything just completely changed. I was like, he must be talking to Meckley. <laughs> He's all fired up about something. Or Vincent, you know, every, I'm like, oh, Oh gosh, she's talking to Vincent. <laughs> like I kind of knew based on kind of how he was talking. I was yeah. like, oh, that's who that it, is. <laughs> yeah. It brought Vincent and I together. I wouldn't, I wouldn't have, I would have never met Vincent if it wasn't for Jake. Um, and I've known Vincent now. How long do we know each other, Vincent? You know, over 10 years, isn't it? Something like that. Um, I think so. Yeah. I'm not I so know. good with days, you know, but uh, <laughs> for a long time. <laughs> you know, Jake, Jake brought, a lot of people together, you know, mm -hmm. and, um, you know, Vincent and I, you know, we, he's, he's like a brother to me too, you know, um, just like Jake was like a brother to me. Um, and, uh, you know, we, uh, we had some good times. I mean, we had many conversations and every time that Jake was in town and Vincent was in town, it was always just, you know, I, I had a picture I was going to send to you, Keith. It was the last picture that I would ever have with Vincent, me and Jake at, uh, Vincent's speech at Magna for the keynote speaker. Yeah. Um, and when I saw that, Amanda brought it up and I'm like, wow, I haven't seen that picture since like 2019. Um, that was in Orlando, I think, right? Yeah, that was- I'm gonna go keynote. rescue my baby. I'll be right back. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that was Orlando. Yeah. Yep. And, you know, yo, you and I, I mean, Jake brought you and me together yep. more. I mean, um, you know, there's uh, I've I knew who you were for a long time, and if it wasn't for Jake, I'd probably I mean, we would have eventually met, I'm sure. But um, yeah. you know, no, again, Jake definitely brought a lot of people together. Jake believed in saying, "You need to talk to him. You need to <laughs> this person could do well for your business." Yeah, that was one of Jake's strengths. He he loved to play chess with the industry. Yeah. I'm um I'm still going through the list that I still I have Jake's um messages in in the Facebook Messenger and he was constantly sending me a list of people uh, that I should have on as guests on on my show and uh, I'm still going through that list by the way wow. to um but he um yeah he was he was he was he was a big um you know help for me in terms of connecting me to everybody you know um that I've had on the show and and a lot of you folks. Yeah that are on it right now. So, yeah. So for, um, for me, I'm, I'm fairly new to the, to the hobby and, you know, Jake always tried to get me, you know, plugged in, but he would always just do everything for me. So it was kind of, you know, I didn't really have to do much. He just set my tank up and, you know, the rest is history. And, you know, on the, on the reef stock, um, you know, he, I, I think I went to every single one besides one, maybe where I was out of town that, that year. And, it wasn't until I think 19, 2019, or might even been like the the one after COVID, where I, I didn't ever realize the it, the scope of his impact in the industry until that reef stock when you know I, I was talking to the vendors and then they're like, You're you're Jake's brother? And then they were like, Oh my god, you know like what this guy's done for the industry? And I'm like, Jake, are you kidding me? Like this is the same guy that would like, you know, wipe burgers on my floor, you know, or like like just kind of like, you know, growing up, we were always just, you know, that wasn't really the thing, but like just hearing people talk about it, like that totally changed my perception of, you know, the impact he had because I I just heard story after story from these vendors and like how he had helped people or, you know, how he just, you know, brought this whole new element to the industry or um and, you know, like, uh, to that day, it's, that's all I've heard is just like, you know, the impact he's had on people and how much he's um, brought fulfillment to people's lives for the hobby or, um, yeah, it's, it's been pretty, pretty incredible to, to see that, that scope of his impact in the industry. Somebody told me a story and I can't remember who it was. If it was somebody that reached out to me via email or a messenger or whatnot, that, um, they bumped into Jake at top shelf aquatics once. And I think it might've been around one of the, uh, um, uh, Reef and Palooza is one of the trade shows. That, that's why Jake was in town, <clears throat> and you know, so this this person just bumped into Jake and was like, "Wow, Jake Adams is a top shelf aquatics," and and went up to him and started talking to Jake, and they ended up having about an hour and a half conversation because Jake just pretty much was uh, giving this person, this guy, advice in terms of like you know how to um, get to that next level in terms of reef keeping. So you know, I think that's kind of a um, a good illustration of how Jake was just willing to go out of his way and help, you know, anybody 
and just, um, you know, to, to talk about reef keeping. And he was just so, so passionate about it and, and um, you know, it showed in a lot of different ways. Yep. Yep. I think you brought up something that was really important about Jake. And for those of us that had an opportunity to see him interact with folks at a show, anytime a young reefer walked up to talk to him, a kid, Jake always stopped and took the time to chat with him to, or her, ask about their aquarium, spend time. It was really, really nice to see him promote the hobby to the youngsters that were there that were just in awe of who Jake Adams was. And he got down close to them. He's a big guy. And he'd get down close to them and have a conversation. And they would just walk away thrilled, thrilled with that opportunity. And that was an aspect that I thought really showed who Jake was. Mm -hmm. 100%. Um, he didn't always have that patience, but he had it for kids. <laughs> yeah, <he did. laughs> Great. Most definitely, Joe. Yes. Most definitely. <laughs> when Jake was uh, was in some of his moods, you'd know. No. <laughs> <laughs> um, Polo1126, thanks so much for that super chat. Miss you, Jake. Thanks, Keith, for bringing everybody uh, together this to celebrate him. Um, Percy Adams, hello, Reef. You saw a reef made a brief appearance there, right? <laughs> um, well, I just wanted ahead. to bring up something about kids. You know, when Jake passed away, um, Matthew Peterson and I talked about this, um, and he made a really good point that I never even thought about until he said it. Um, I, I, I swear Jake was interviewing me. And just like Matt said, he was interviewing him on what it was going to be like to be a father. And, you know, I look back at all the questions and all the times that he spent with my kids and how much time he, you know, had with them, which wasn't a whole lot. And he was just having a blast. He enjoyed just spending time with Isaac and Isabel and talking to them. And he would ask so many questions about, um, being a father and i never even put two and two together until matthew said that to me he's like he was he was interviewing us the whole time every time he was asking about kids and i'm sure he did that with you joe and mark and chris you know um vincent um luke you i mean you were right there with him so mm -hmm. you know the fact that um when matt put it that way i was like you know there's so much more to the friendship that that i have with jake you know and and it was like you know it really really hit home even more because i didn't even think about that aspect of it because you know i always considered you know jake for for many many years you know a really close personal friend and um he was interviewing us yeah there's, there's i think a i think there. i think all our kids I, you know remember him yeah yeah there, there's, uh, yeah there's i mean photo like of, i'm holding my daughter it's it's kind of crazy but I was thinking just as you were talking about that, I think about 50% of my conversations were about children and had nothing to do with fish. or <laughs> tank. It was, what are your kids up to? What's it like? How are you dealing with that? Yeah. He really, there is more to Jake than just coral, even though that's what we all are here to celebrate. I mean, like he was, he was looking forward to this chapter of his life very much. Well, Windsor, you can remember when yeah. I, came in the summertime with uh my son to the uh reef builder studio and you know he didn't my son doesn't care about aquariums but he was uh he was um he's you know like all kids love youtube now and there's all these youtube stars and you know jake is a youtube star and he had yeah. the youtube plaque on the wall and my son was staring up at that plaque and like jake took it off the wall and like let him hold it and and I'm like, there's all these awesome corals. And it's like, my son just wanted to hold the YouTube black. <laughs> I know that picture of you guys. Yeah. With your arms around him looking Stay. at the other aquariums together. That was, that's one of my favorite photos. Uh, he had a blast. And yeah, same, same story, right? Like he was so patient. And so were you, Windsor. I mean, you, you took when, when, uh, Jake and I wanted to geek out about corals, like you took my son on a Pokemon hunt, you know, yes. and. <laughs> I yeah. cannot wait to do that with Ree. He had a uh, he had a little bit of crush on you after that, yes. my son. <laughs> Sweetheart. <laughs> oh, Pokemon no. Go. Wow. 
past. I know. You got Isaac in the Pokemon Go oh, and the Water yeah. Box family reunion. Uh, 2020, COVID was a was they were talking about it, um, but nothing was really going on here in the U.S. And um, after that, you know, Mike Isaac was a Pokemon Go fanatic for a long time. I mean, we used to drive around in cars and go in to church parking lots and sit there and catch Pokemon. <laughs> so fun. <laughs> Jake and I <laughs> would do that. <laughs> Hey, I want to welcome. You, uh, you, Vincent? Uh, go ahead, Vincent. Oh, he's muted. Vincent, you're muted. Yes, yeah, I think you're. There I go. think you're go muted, ahead. Vincent. No, I mean, I was just wanted to tell you. I mean, all all our kids remember Jake. <laughs> And uh, yeah, I mean, like I often talk about uh, Jake with uh, my boss, my friends, when every time he would be coming here, you know, we would be hiking and uh, snorkeling and diving, you know, and my kid would follow along, you know, why they don't want to come and join us with any other of my friends. Mm. <laughs> so yeah. Jake was a big kid. <laughs> yes. It was. Wow. I, know. I want to welcome uh, Mike Paletta. Mike, I see you finally made it to the uh, stream. Can you hear? Can you hear us, Mike? Can we hear you? I can hear you fine. Yeah. Sorry, it's been a, a tough couple of weeks. The whole family had COVID. Oh no! Two Ooh. weeks, and we still don't. We're still kind of out of it, to be honest. Uh, sorry yeah. to hear that. Hope All you're right. better. Hope you're better. Yeah. Um, I, the main thing I want to do is get my sense of smell and taste back. I'd be really happy just with that. <laughs> Oh, oh man, man. Oh, Jared. Hey, now you can suck on the siphon and not feel bad about it. <laughs> <laughs> no, the only good thing is I can clean the skimmers now, and my wife doesn't get mad because she can't smell them. So it, that's like, there is one better. That's hilarious. <laughs> so, uh, San, Sanjay, any any stories you want to share about Jake? You've probably known. Uh, you know, you guys go way back. Yeah, probably. I mean, other than Luke, I think I might have known him the longest among all the people here. Yeah, yeah, I, yeah. I think I got I you. Yeah. Windsor met him the first time. All right. <laughs> but I met him sometime around 20, 2003, 2004, or maybe even somewhere in that time frame. Uh, he was not Jake then. I mean, he was Jake, but he wasn't Jake. Right? <laughs> uh, I, I was giving a seminar talking about lighting at the club in Charlotte, North Carolina. And Usually after the talks are over, you know, people hang out and chat with you and, you know, go out for dinner. And this young guy was hanging out, asking me good questions and hung out for dinner. And dinner ended like 9.30 or 10 o'clock. And, you know, we had a lot of conversations over dinner about what he was doing. And I found out he was a student studying marine biology. And, you know, he was doing these cool experiments with water flow and corals and and then he goes at 10 o'clock, we were about to leave, and he goes, oh, you, you want to come and see my lab? I'm like, you know, how far away is your lab? It was like an hour away. <laughs> right, so at 10 o'clock, we're driving over to South Carolina. An hour and a half. Yeah. Right. Yeah. About <laughs> yeah. an hour, right? From Charlotte? With Jake driving. I know. Yeah. Oh, okay, you're right. I had another friend who was with us, and he was driving. So it wasn't Jake driving. Oh. Uh, and then we go to his lab and, you know, he's showing me all the lab and, you know, we're chatting away, talking about corals and showing me his experiments that he was doing. And as usual, you know, as we leave, he's like, oh, you know, do you want any corals? I've got these cool little corals here, you know. Oh, and he yeah. pulls out two corals and he goes, oh, you got to have these. You got to have these. I'm looking <laughs> at them going, one of them was a little brown thing, you know. Um, some Samacora or something or the other, I can't even remember the name. And the other one was like a little piece size of a dime. Right? <laughs> I didn't know where it was. He told me the name at that time, but I probably forgot. And I brought them home with me. Right? The Samacora kind of disappeared. You know, you lose corals and it goes away. But that other little piece that started as a dime is like a 12 inch diameter Sandolita. Amazing. And I still have it. Okay, a lot of people tell me, why don't you get, before, this was before Jake, why don't you get rid of this coral? You know, it's taking up so much space in your tank, you could put something cool. I go, no, no, you don't get it. It's cool because there's a story with that coral. Yes. Right? It's I found this young kid who was so excited to talk to me, right? He showed me all his experiments and all these things. And then I told Jake, I said, Jake, you, we need to get you into the speaking circle. You know, so you can tell people about these experiments with water flow 
and all of these things. And Jake's like, I don't know anybody. I said, I'll hook you up because I know these people contact me. <laughs> and I'll hook you up and tell them to, you know, because I was looking for speakers and I'll, I'll give them your name and you can go and you can start doing the same thing. So in some sense, I take credit <laughs> for putting Jake out there. You can't <laughs> you know. And Jake, you know, Jake and I had a kind of a different relationship because, of course, I was much older than him. He always respected me. You know, he always did. And he always, he would say things about other people, but he never said anything bad about me. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I try to encourage him a lot during that process. I got him all these speaking engagements. I even tried to get him to go to grad school at Penn State. Uh, I mm. got him appointments with some of the professors at Penn State. He came and stayed at my house. Uh, went and talked to the professors. To, you know, I told him, I said, this guy's so excited about things, corals, he'd make a great grad student. You know? But I, I don't think Jake's heart was in there in going to grad school. But I thought he would have made a very good researcher and a grad student. I mean, based on what he had done his undergrad. And over the years, I mean, Jake and I, we became very good friends. And, you know, uh, when Jake started Reefstock, he was like, I want you to be at the very first Reefstock. Okay. <laughs> and then he said, well, let me, let me first get through the first one, see how it goes. And I'll invite you to the next one. Because <laughs> he wasn't, you know, he didn't want to get me there and have it be a flop. So I went to the very next one that was, and we stayed at, so, you know, back in those days, Jake would, you know, we always stayed in people's houses. You know, we weren't staying in hotels. People didn't have big budgets to invite guests. So Jake put me up in Steve Herlock's house. Wow. And Steve Herlock's house was high on a mountain, right on the peak of the mountain, <laughs> overlooking all of you know, the valley below. Mm -hmm. And uh, I took my whole family there. So my wife was there, my kids were there, and we stayed at Steve Herlock's house and had a really good time. Steve was a wonderful host and a wonderful guy. And unfortunately, he passed away a while back with, with cancer, I think. Um, so Jake and I have been you know, friends for a very, very long time. Um, when he did the Reefstock Australia, he said, you're going to be my first speaker. And sure enough, I was. <laughs> the very first reef stock that he did, he invited me to be the speaker from the U.S. Amazing. So I paid him back, though. I took him to Mexico. You Remember? did. <laughs> so they, yeah. I got invited to go to Mexico, and they said, oh, if you want to invite somebody else, we can accommodate two speakers. I said, yeah. I haven't seen Jake in a while. I'd love to hang out with him. Invite Jake. So that was the other thing we did oftentimes. That's right? a blast. If we knew we were going to speak and they were looking for other speakers, we'd try to get our friends invited so we could hang out and talk reefs and do other stuff. <laughs> yeah. So over the years, you know, we've met pretty much every year, you know, and uh, it's been it's been great. I really miss him sometimes. Uh, yeah. But I see his coral every day. <laughs> more than once a day. Because I look at my tank more than once a day. <laughs> And, his and right we're gonna uh, the and I, Chris, I showed it to Chris. Chris came. Uh, Chris. That thing is massive. Him. It's um, and what 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 fish lives underneath of it? There was some goby that lived underneath it. Yeah, yeah. yeah. It's, what, um, what coral are we talking about? Purple leaf. My sandalitha. Sandalitha. Yeah. yeah. Do I have a picture of that, Chris? Coral, it's, it's a, a no, you don't have a picture of that, Keith. Um, that's uh, he used to think it was. We used to think it was um, Halamitra. And then I, I remember when, I remember when Jake um, found, figured out that it was Sandalitha, and he's like, "Dude, he's like, I gave this to Jasanje way back when, and it was a, we thought it was Halamitra, and um, it's it's a Sandalitha, and um, you know, of course, it's not something that that people geek out over. People aren't going to be like, "Oh, I need a piece of that." Well, I want a piece of that, <laughs> you know, <laughs> just like I'm sure everybody else on here wants a piece of that eventually at some point, Sanjay. Next time I come up, you just tell me and I'll put it under the stall and we'll cut the rim off of it and everybody here will get a piece. <laughs> hey, you're welcome to do it. It's huge now. <laughs> I know. I mean, Jake always was hung up about coral names and taxonomy of the corals <laughs> and this and that. And he would call me up and talk about those things and I could care less. I'm like, <laughs> my corals all have stories. 
oh, this one came from Joe Caparetta when I was down in, in you know, L.A. And <laughs> he didn't want to break it off for me, but I forced him into it. You know, those, <laughs> and I still have some of those quotes, right? He wants That's to, probably the day. Am I muted? Are we good? I, uh, no, I posted up. I posted a link to Sanjay's photo of that Sandalitha in the YouTube uh, chat. So oh, awesome. good. Thanks, Matt. Awesome. <laughs> uh, uh, hey, been... Rob. Go ahead, Sanjay. No, I was, I, I was done. I was going to let somebody else speak. What was Joe going to yeah, say? Rob, I was going to say, Rob, do you have any uh, stories, uh, interesting stories you want to share? I'm, I'm sure there's plenty. Oh, there are a number, but, you know, I'm lucky among the group other than, than Luke is that, you know, I'm in Colorado. So I had the geographical proximity, right, to Jake, other than when he decided to go run off and, and live with Joe Cap for a while. Um, and then he regained his, his sanity and decided to come back to Colorado. <laughs> you pushed him out, did you? You pushed him out. <laughs> so... Um, this was uh, one of uh, old back. It was about the summer of 2008. Um, Jake lived uh, has always lived around the Golden area and, and uh, I was visiting and uh, we went over to a little place Table Mountain Inn that I know Windsor is probably very familiar with. Yeah. And it was a beautiful, nice, you know, probably late August, early September afternoon. And, you know, we were chatting, we were going to, after lunch, we we're going to head up the hill and, and go see Herlock because his tank was probably three or four months old at the time. And so Jake goes up and he orders this, this beer. Um, he orders a barman. And if you're not familiar, barman, it, it has an entire ritual around it, right? It's a seven minute pour, right, for this beer. And I think that's what really attracted Jake to the beer itself, not not the anything else other than the ritual so we're, we're visiting and having some fun and and we're chatting a little bit about what was going on he was all excited about politics at the time uh that was you know obama was running he hadn't quite been elected yet and um his beer shows up and he is just enjoying it thoroughly right we had a great lunch we had a good chat so we went up the hill and he did some videoing of Herlock's tank and we just had a really good time in that beautiful, as a couple of you mentioned, uh, place up, up in the mountains there. Well, fast forward, oh, about two years later, I'm dating my now wife and she happens to work uh, not too far from Jake. She works at the Coors facility right there in Golden. And they have a bar inside Coors for the employees called Bill's. And so the employees can go in and you can invite guests. And so I invite Jake and we go in and visit and we walk in the door and he sees all of these handles and, and it's like, well, what do you want? And he's like, it's all free. It's like, well, yes. <laughs> and of course, what does he order but a barman, right? So... They, they start their pour. He goes over, we're, we're sitting by the window and all of a sudden he's waiting. It's gonna be a few minutes before the beer's ready. He whips out his phone, Pokemon Go, <laughs> right? <clears throat> and he gets all excited because there was some character he was looking for that was evidently right outside on the Coors property that he had never been able to catch before. Um, he was just beside himself. So we've we've had many, many, many little adventures around Golden and uh, surrounding various uh, beverage opportunities that presented themselves. So it was it was quite enjoyable. Hey, Chris, any uh, Chris Carney, any any stories you want to share about uh, Jake in terms of, um, well, whatever? <laughs> Where to start? Doesn't have to be um, anything specific. No, no, um, I was going to piggyback on Sanjay. Um, I was the kid behind Jake doing the flow experiments with him okay. in lab. <laughs> so um, I remember the laminar flow device that we made um, and the uh, actually the dumb, dumb suckers we used as... Um, <laughs> dissolving mechanisms because on a college budget trying to get this right. research done so that just brought back that memory um but yeah talking about replumbing a entire college wet lab with jake was just um 
very memorable <laughs> indeed. Um, I mean, this was DC pumps, all DC pumps. So with with Jake, the the flow guru, like we were doing forty five angles instead of nineties, and <laughs> everything, trying to maximize every little every little bump for that pump head. So. That is that brought back a back a flash right there. Now which hey, one? Uh, go I'm ahead. Just trying to get dates right. Say that again. What year was that? Just so that I get my dates right. I I kind of waited. Yeah, it was um, it was two thousand two. Two thousand two. Okay. Yeah, it's when we met, and then, so he was at USC right. a year prior to me. So I don't know when exactly that. That meeting in Charlotte was, but um, I think it was 2003, most likely. Okay, I mean that was when. So that he would have been a junior, senior at that point. Yeah. So he was definitely established in the wet lab there. So, yeah. um, just want to share some more comments from the viewers of uh, Ferocity. Hello, everyone. We miss you, Jake. The way he shared his passion for the corals had me hooked from the get go. His excitement for the hobby was contagious, and I've fallen totally in love with it. That's awesome. Uh, Alex Correa, hey Keith, we need at least a four-hour stream today. Laugh out loud now. <laughs> <laughs> um, uh, maybe um, somebody knows the answer to this. Reef with me. What happened to the Jake Adams Coral Auction? So, um, oh, the one that Windsor. was. Supposed... Yeah, so that probably will. I, we might do a small one coming up. Okay. Um, yeah, so a lot of those corals went to. Um, a local shop with Merman's Reef with Jack uh, who's taking mm -hmm. care of our studio. <laughs> and honestly, that just those corals are just kind of growing up now. We just thought it would be best to kind of let them sit for a little bit and then kind of regroup with, you know, the development of the whole entire reef builders team. We thought it would be best to kind of like slow our roll a little bit before we do another auction. But yeah, I think, I think we got some stuff coming down the pipeline. So, there's I mean, a lot there, that's for sure. I know there's so much, but yeah. <laughs> Rob knows. Oh my god, I mean, it's there. crazy. So yeah, we had to you know, rejigger some things and shuffle some stuff around, you know, to get everything kind of healthy and thriving. Um, and yeah, I I don't have any dates on that, but I know that we'll probably be doing something hopefully in the near future. Cool. Okay. Rob, do, Rob, do you remember how many frags we made? I mean, you guys were stopping was, corals left and oh right those two days, three, four days that I was up there, and there must have been a thousand frags, six hundred anyhow. No, um, easily. Yeah, we <laughs> fragged ourselves into a stupor. Yes. Yeah, I, I, know, <laughs> I, know. I said something. Joe and Sanja and Paletta, they all got a bunch of them. Um, yeah. Uh, there's an insane amount of corals that um that that those flats had in them. Yeah. Um, and how overgrown they were. Oh, man. <laughs> well, and, and I was at the studio yesterday, and there's still oh. plenty of corals in the flats. <laughs> All the tanks are growing nicely. So, Great. Good. How's so, the Heaven's Gate looking? You know which one I'm talking about, Rob? The Heaven's oh. Gate Speciosa, because that one wasn't looking the best. That's why we kept it in the flat. And I'm showing that right now, Chris, a picture you gave to me there, you and Amanda. Uh, that's a pretty freaking nice co coral. It it's is. So yeah, I think it's still there. Yeah, Jack told me when I was at uh, Aqua Shelly, he said it's like double the size and was looking really good. And oh, um, yeah, so I was happy about that because I was really worried about it because it was in that one tank where it just kind of paled out. Yeah. And, um, you know, I moved it into a flat and Jack said it's just growing like a weed. So that's amazing. I'm so happy to hear that. Is that a little canny? Yeah. No, it's just, uh, well, back on I, I argued with Jake on that coral many a times, but Vincent had to end. I, I guess I see he had to bow out here. Um, he, they they said it was speciosa. Um, that came in on the first shipment that Vincent sent me in 2020, and I sent it to Jake because he was asking for smoothies. He loved the the, the deep water smooth skin acros, and um, there's actually probably a half a dozen or more different species at the studio that. Um, I didn't feel were good enough and healthy enough to to come to you know to be shipped. So they're all doing extremely well from according to what um 
what Jack said. So I, I can't wait to well, see him at Reef Stock. Yeah, Chris, I, I'll tell you, the I saw the picture come up on the live stream, and I physically touched that coral yesterday, and it is much bigger. So Awesome. Yeah. Yay. Awesome. So good to hear. It's been a minute since I've been there. Yeah, I miss I miss all my corals. <laughs> that's, my, that's my one regret. I never saw the studio with Jake. Oh, you know, same. He kept telling me that to come, and he's like, Oh, yeah, Chris. Because this, the last time, last year, you know, before he passed away, he was telling me that I'm going to invite you to come to Reef Stock so you can come and hang out with me at the studio. But never happened. So I got fortunate enough to go to the studio and see him um, the year before. My uh, man that bought me a ticket to go out to Reef Stock last minute, and um, it was nice to go out and hang out with Jake in the studio. It was uh, it was a really good time. I mean, we just sat there and rolled around on chairs and went from tank to tank. <laughs> Drinking a beer and having a good time talking about corals, you know, that's, uh, that was, uh, that's, um, that's definitely something I'll never forget is, uh, you know, to spend that time, um, at the studio with Jake, um, that one time that I got a chance to do it. I think what was really yeah. amazing was, was seeing the studio come together from an empty shell, right. To what he built. And it was just, it was amazing. Just amazing. And it still looks good. Phone, you know? But amazing. Yeah, he would describe stuff to me on the phone. This is what I'm doing. This is what I'm doing now, you know, and so on. And when we were in Mexico, he said, You have to come and see it, you know. Yeah. But, I remember he took a picture of me. I remember him saying, well, He was with me in, it was 2011, the end of 2011, when we found the home for unique corals. And he said, Oh, go over there and look at that wall, and I'll take a picture of you from behind. And then we could look back on this picture one day, and I still have that picture. Um, awesome. And it was an empty, unique corals facility here in Los Angeles. Right. And then he helped me design the flow. And he's like, you don't need any live rock. The surface area and the walls of these 30-foot raceways, <laughs> on the top and bottom of the gyre plate, we're going to do a gyre flow. I mean, it was like, it was his system. And you can use MRC, Orca Pro 3 skimmers. I'm like, <laughs> okay. <laughs> and, we did the flow and everything worked great until sure. the corals grew. Like this, <laughs> it's in one direction. So, you know, it was a little bit of a learning curve, but it, I mean, it did work. Um, yeah. And then he, you know, he was testing out all this equipment at his house. And if you've ever been to his house, I've slept on his famous couch and uh, he had all these aquariums everywhere and he couldn't test his equipment any longer on these guinea pig little aquariums. So he called me up one day and he's like, you know, I'm thinking about moving to, to moving to California. And, you know, is there a home for me there? You know, could I test my stuff? You know, maybe work at any corals. So I talked to Tony, like, yeah, let's do it. We'll give you a job, you know, put you on salary. You can train our staff, work with us, unpack corals, frank corals. It'd be great. And you can at night and in the afternoons do your reef builders and post. And he's like, and I could put all my equipment on your on your raceways and we could write about it and it'd be great synergy. And, and he did it. He packed up and he stayed with us for a little bit and got an apartment. And he tested all these crazy yes. devices. I mean, uh, you name it. He had everything. Uh, magnets all over the fridge. And it was great. <laughs> every night, unpack corals and then turn it into a disco at night. And uh, it was it was fun. I miss it. And then he, he was very sad the day. He's like, you're not going to be mad at me, but I think my time here is done. And not in a negative way, but I think I've, I've developed and I know what I want to do. I want to have my own studio. I want my own systems. I want to little mini unique corals back home in Colorado. And um, I mean, that's what he did. He went back and he built it. It was awesome. And he took some yeah. of my equipment, that big square <laughs> thing that he had. Uh, well, anyway, I'm getting off, off topic here. So. Well, no, hey, I mean, you can't get off topic when you're talking yeah, about shake. Yeah. <laughs> hey, Joe, uh, you mentioned, Mike, it... Joe, go ahead. Go, go ahead. ahead. Uh, no, go I was ahead, just say, you mentioned sleeping on his couch. I remember being totally enamored with the geophagus and that tank that yes. was on the floor. I mean, who puts a who puts an aquarium like on the <laughs> floor? <Yeah. laughs> like, we don't have yeah. any other room. That's yeah, who. And, and they're all they're all beautiful. Like, and, and I think you know we all know Jake as the marine aquarist, but his love for aquariums went well beyond. Yeah. I remember fresh water. 
yeah, I remember him geeking yeah. out, showing me like, have you seen these little uh, ir Iroclarians, these little tiny freshwater plants that he was growing immersed? And he was like, I'm, I'm the, one of the first in the country to have them. And there's, and I was like, I've never seen that. So, mm -hmm. uh, but I remember sleeping on that couch and looking at that tank on the floor and just, that was so incredible. It's so, so unique. And it was totally Jake. So, yep. I've yep. got yeah. stories like that. Cause, um, I mean, I've known him since the nineties. Right. And, uh, I remember his house in Columbia, South Carolina, and having to share a room with an African gray parrot. It was like a mattress on the floor and a parrot. <laughs> and the parrot yep. could make human noises. So I'm trying to sleep and it would go, <clears throat> like, while you're trying to sleep. <laughs> um, and I remember just thinking, you know, I'm a reef. We're all Aquarius people. But sometimes you walk into a house and go, the ratio of aquariums to living space is pretty insane in here. Uh, and then when he moved to Colorado, he had the house. And I think, did he share that with you, Luke? Because I remember seeing you briefly there in Golden. Um, it was a house in... It was right by Coors. Yeah, it was like a couple blocks away from Coors. So, yeah, he... he yeah. Uh, it was funny with that because, you know, like he came out here when I uh, to Colorado, back to Colorado whenever I started college. And then he just never left after that in Golden. But, yeah, he had quite a few tanks in that house yeah it's, it's incredible how many tanks you could fit in a house for sure and then he went to like what was there. like a barn i don't know it was like a oh yeah it was a, a uh, carriage house yeah a carriage like, house or something yeah. yeah and again the ratio of aquariums to living was insane and then when i finally saw the studio for the first time i was like okay now this is really insane <laughs> you know like, like there's there's a bedroom but then there's just you know i mean we've all seen the studio but uh but you know now we're seeing what lore and 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 magic that that place holds for a lot of reef hobbyists. It's just you know mm -hmm. it, it was just really cool to see the evolution over time. You know to oh, see yeah. see how that went. So. And uh, the Columbia, South Carolina thing. It's funny when I was going through a lot of his stuff um, right. last year. There was a, an article where um, you know our mom, you know she she really kind of planted that seed, and then you know Jake just took off after that. Where um, he had this whole thing with discus for like years and then he like went to cichlids and he went and did that for years. And then, um, you know, we had an octopus for a year and this article, they, they wrote an article about, you know, my mom and then, you know, Jake was kind of in the background about, you know, joining um, uh, aquarium clubs. But then, you know, it was like a picture on the front cover of like the Palmetto state with, um, like the Palmetto with the octopus state. right in the tank. So the, um, um, it's crazy. Like, you know, from, from that, what group that's right in the tank so uh, what group well I, I see we have both uh two new additions to the live stream i see reef adams see we have both uh two new and i see julian sprung i see reef adams julian's in the house and i see julian sprung i think um i think somebody has the um the youtube welcome back julian i think somebody has the um youtube yeah if somebody can mute their youtube we're getting okay i think we're good there we go. How you doing, Julian? Okay, I think we're good. There we go. Oh, I think hey, you're muted, Julian. Julian. You're, you're muted, Julian. Nope, Julian's no, muted. You're muted. <laughs> you're, you're muted, Julian. We can't hear you, Julian. There we go. Now you can hey. hear me. Now we got you. There you I go. Want, there we go. I want to make sure it's not me with now the YouTube. Now we got you. There you go. I want to make yeah. sure it's not me with the YouTube. Everybody mute themselves and then just let the Julian... Uh, Let's unmute. <laughs> <laughs> Let's try that. Okay, you you can hear me now, right? Yeah. How you doing, Julian? Yes. Good. And I think we've gotten rid of the YouTube echo. Yes. Yeah, I think so. Beautiful. Okay. And there's Reef. Hi. Hey, Reef. Hey, Reef. <laughs> so, Julian, we're on um... his forehead. What's he got on his forehead? It's an angel. It's called an angel kiss, but it's in the shape of a J. Oh, yeah. Ooh. Oh, wow. so now, when he was born, I was like, is that a J on his forehead? <laughs> uh, he's marked. It, yeah, he is marked. It, those fade usually the first year yeah. or two. So. Got a scarlet nice J. <laughs> so, yeah. uh, Julian, I don't want to put you on the spot, Julian, but uh, everybody's been kind of sharing their favorite uh, Jake stories. I know you just got uh, in on from an international flight, but um, any, anything yeah. you want to share at this point? I'm exhausted. <laughs> 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 I, 
um, what to share about the trip, about Jake, I guess about any of that. Oh my gosh. Why, why, don't, we, why don't we start about Jake and then we'll get into the trip because I know Joe and Tony pass along some really nice um, pictures and some video yes. and we, we got um, you on and I think Vincent popped out, but maybe he'll pop back in. Sure. Yeah. Um, gosh, where, where to begin? I, you know, my uh, story with Jake is uh, I, I just, I, I remember being at a, a trade show and, and this tall young <laughs> kid coming up uh, uh talking a mile a minute and his eyes darting everywhere, looking at, <laughs> as he was talking to me, looking at everything we had on display in our two little fishies booth and then picking up stuff and talking about it. And I could see, of course, um, that I was encountering somebody on a higher level of intellect and um, I, I was intrigued, um, but also a bit intimidated. <laughs> I'm sure he was intimidated uh, talking to me as, uh, you know, perhaps a guru. But um, yeah, um, Jake was, uh, um, you know, you all know, um, a big vacuum of information and a resource of information. And I, I knew that I was... Uh, even though you know, there was a big age gap, I was talking to somebody who, you know, from a, a point of view of experience, was a peer. Uh, typically, it shows people come up to me and they're, um, whether they're a novice or not, they, they've got a million questions about how to solve this problem or not. And that was not where Jake was coming from. He was more interested in talking about um problems that 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 I was thinking about, you know, taxonomical ones or chemistry or or just, you know, biology, anything. Um, so that that was our first encounter. And then, you know, I, I saw him a number of times more. Uh, there was an occasion where we both went to a show in uh, Singapore. Uh, and I remember um, he, he needed a place to stay. And so of course I said, yeah, sure. Uh, and so he stayed, uh, in the hotel room where I was at. Um, and we got to know each other a little better that time. He also came and, and, uh, visited me in Miami a number of times. So we, we developed a friendship over time, uh, you know, obviously sharing the the passion for the reef aquarium hobby, but also um, freshwater. Um, I got to visit him in Colorado. Um, I forget what year that was, but uh, for a, a reef stock, it probably was the second reef stock. Rob, do you know when that was? I um, think it was. It was the second or third reef stock. We're at the downtown aquarium. Right, right. Mm -hmm. So uh, then I, that's when I got to visit his space and, and see all the different setups he had in freshwater and, and marine. Um, of course, this is before the studio and, and everything, but uh, he he um, showed me uh, the the joy of Bucephalandra plants, uh, which I was completely unaware of at that time. You know, I had my uh, you know more normal freshwater, and and he knew everything about these things. So just like right. corals. He, you know, and, and he would tell me, oh, you go to the, this website and look at this. And these guys know all about it. And, oh, OK. <laughs> so then that was, you know, Jake as the resource into um, many different things, as everyone discovered uh, with Reef Builders, where he shared his, you know, immediate knowledge of what was the latest and greatest on coral taxonomy and, and other uh, things happening in the uh, marine biological world, which I always had my finger on. And so we would trade discoveries. He'd, he'd uh, eventually text me, did you see this? And I did the same thing. So we tipped each other off on things. And so we, I, we developed that kind of a academic uh, friendship, which was really very nice and I miss it a lot. Um, and as many of you know, we, we uh, were rather competitive in our appreciation of of corals that were special. 
um, which could be translated to ugly for and uh, <laughs> you know <laughs> unremarkable for most people. But uh, if you if you're a coral nerd, there there were things that would catch your eye. So he he always had the uh, the ability to get into the different shows in advance and and see all the corals uh, before I did, which pissed me off because uh, <laughs> if if there was ever a coral I was interested in, uh, Jake already had dibs on it. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> so only a couple of times did I ever manage to uh, snag something before he went, and he would go out of his way to say, yeah, I would have gotten that if you hadn't gotten it first. <laughs> Right. So um, even if he got it, he would have shared it with you later. That's true. And he was generous <laughs> that way. I, I got a lot of frags of those things that I would have uh, snagged myself. So uh, that that's very true, Sanjay. Um, so this trip, as I'm sure you all heard about uh, and saw the videos, it, it was um, it was great, great to get to um no, Luke, uh, we, you know, I'd only just uh, briefly met him a couple of times and uh, we uh, got to know each other better over, over this trip. Um, so uh, and it, it, it was an interesting kind of a thing that I, I think anybody on the trip experienced, too. Um, you know, sure, meeting Luke, you can see a resemblance to Jake, but then you know, as you get to know each other better, there's also, you know, there's more to that. And of course, Luke uh, is a fascinating individual on his own. <laughs> and and it was great um, sharing the experience, what, what we all did there. Um, I'm, uh, and I'm sharing some of the, uh, Julian, both uh, Tony and Joe pass along some pictures of that uh, trip. So I'm just sharing a couple of them here. Great. <laughs> One thing I wanted to mention, which I thought was kind of funny, when, when Sanjay was telling the story about how he met Jake, I don't know if you remember this, Julian, but you, you told me that story when we were on this trip. And I, I was like, deja vu. So it just made me like wonder, you know, how many people did he approach at a trade show or at a, you know, club and like, you know, like started asking questions and like, you know, that's how he met a lot of people early on. Yeah. Makes and, me wonder. He, he was going a mile a minute. And, and there were there were times when also later that he was uh he would get on a, on a subject and you could just sit back and listen <laughs> um, <laughs> and it was and sometimes really scary because you know you could see where i i knew where he was going on something and i you know i would just sort of see whether it was let's say on lighting you know this is going to be the next uh light <laughs> source and oh you should really get it you know he would talk to me you know, from a commercial point of view, you, you really need to investigate this, look at this, and and uh, this is where, where it's going and heading. Um, pretty, you know, it's fascinating. Uh, and many times he was right on, sometimes he wasn't. Um, and yeah, and, it, and I may have shared with some people at, at times it was scary because uh, he, he was uh, definitely more um, in tune with the technology uh, than I was. Um, and, you know, I, I was learning <laughs> quite a bit. Uh, Don't you still use metal halide, Julian? <laughs> I have one. <laughs> I, have, I have one that uh, is still, still operational. One that, uh, is still, still operational. If somebody's wow. got their YouTube that, back. That's one thing you can say about Jake. He, he literally loved everything about the hobby, from the technology to the people to the corals to the fish. Yeah. Freshwater, it didn't matter. There's something about yeah. every aspect of it. I mean, all of us love it, but he totally loved it. I mean, it was as immersive for him as anyone I've ever met. And uh, getting back, I, I haven't discussed when I met him, I was giving a talk in South Carolina, probably 2001, 2002, and this tall, skinny kid comes up to me with a C-scope article that has a picture of a Pseudochromus Friedmani on it. And he goes, will you sign this? And I go, yeah. He goes, this is what got me into salt water. He said, your article here and how long it took you to find this fish. I like people that are passionate like this. And we started talking and immediately we're friends because I knew this was a guy that was as in love with this hobby as we all are. And our relationship became very symbiotic over the years in that 
we kind of fed off each other. And probably like five or six years later, I started going through a very messy divorce. My ex-wife killed off my 1,200 gallon tank. I quit mm -hmm. writing, I quit speaking. And Vic and uh, Lou had me come down to Worldwide Corals to give a talk and Jake was there. And he comes up to me, he goes, I don't know if you remember me. I said, we've been talking. He said, yeah, but people forget who I am. I said, no, I, I don't forget who you are. He said, I want you to get back into writing for me. I want you to start writing for reef builders and get back into the hobby again. And because of Jake, I got back into writing, back into speaking, and really back into as intensely as I am into the hobby. And for that, I will always owe Jake a debt of gratitude. And that's why uh, one of the things that touches me is the last words I ever said to Jake were thanks. The morning before he got on the plane, we were talking about fenbendazole and how to use it. And literally the last thing I texted him was thanks. So for that, I'm very appreciative. Yeah. Wow. Mm -hmm. For that story. I didn't know yeah, that. My, uh, my last message with him was it was great to see you at Daytona. And, and you know, he said that to me and I said it back to him. And that was that was the end. And it was it was a great way to end uh, in mm -hmm. a more way. But um, yeah. yeah, I'm with you, Mike. You I think know. I think I've told Windsor this story. Um, I'm sure he was making lots of phone calls. So I don't I don't you know, I'm not going to say mine. Mine was special to me, but to him, he was just probably going down the list while he was drinking his beer at the airport, you know, right. <laughs> but he was at the airport to fly to Vincent having a beer. And wow. he just he just called me and he was like, here's the stuff we're going to talk about when I get back uh, about reef therapy. And he just started going down the list. And it was just like he was an open <laughs> channel like that where you're like, OK, hold on, hold on. I need to start <laughs> writing some of this stuff down. Um but it, it's, you know, then then I got excited for him for his trip, but also for him to come back. You know, I was like, oh, that's going to be fun to talk about that stuff. And then, yeah, of course, that never manifested. But I was just glad that, I, you know, that he called and that we had that conversation at the very end there. So I missed his phone call that day because I was busy and um, I sent him a message, said, um, I have a safe flight talk to you when you get to Bali with Vincent and it was really hard when I when I actually missed that call after talking to Vincent and expecting to talk to Jake that day. Um, yeah. It was rough. Um, wish I would have answered the phone because it would have been the last time I had a chance to talk to him. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so I guess a couple of things. Um, one is um, I think we, we certainly would it would be great to talk about how we can you know, keep Jake's legacy alive in terms of what, what we can all do to, to help, um, you know, make that happen. And then, um, we got to talk about corals, right? Because Jake is, right. is, is certainly uh, looking down watching and he's like, why are you talking about corals yet? You know, and I mean, I'm sure that's what, uh, you know, so we gotta, we gotta talk let's, about corals, right? Let's combine it all and talk about what this trip that we just did. Yeah. I want to hear more about the trip. Um, should 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 yeah. I um so so Joe and Tony, you guys yes. sent a video, and I think Joe, you kind of gave a recap on site in terms of what the whole trip was about. Should I play that video, or do you want? To... Oh, the all the footage is a group effort from all the persons that was on the trip. We try I try to gather it in a folder, so it was a group effort that you see there. And yeah. I think the intro video uh, was actually Windsor and Luke's idea to talk about what we were doing, uh, you know, incorporating Jake's ashes and stuff. But it's about two minutes. You see that one? Or... Yeah, yeah. Let me let me yeah. play that one, and then um, then we'll come back. So I'm gonna I'm gonna mute everybody here and um, see if I can pull this off. We'll play that video. Hang on one second. Here we go. Years since Jake Adams, now I want to grab my phone so I can see it. His close <laughs> friends, his fellow colleagues, and family uh, to basically celebrate Jake's life. And we're doing him justice by doing what he we think he would want is to actually use some of his ashes in the concrete mix uh, to build a new reef. And these are the islands that Jake was in route to explore with, with Vincent when he passed. And so this is a, a very fitting place for us to, to, to carry this out. We just got done uh, planting spiders, basically, you know, zip tying corals uh, to these metal frames, which um, 
was probably one of the coolest things I've ever done in my life. Um, just seeing how that works and, and what Vincent does here uh, is it's pretty incredible. So um, now we're here at the location where we're going to um, mix the ashes and uh, solidify um, into a concrete base for corals to grow in the future with Jake's ashes. Yeah, and what a fitting foundation that is that he will always be supporting uh, this new reef um, here in Indonesia. Yeah. Yeah, so we, um, the spiders are these metal frameworks, um, and we put about 25 fragments on each spider. And I think we did, what, six, five or six different spiders. We, we selected species that we think would be pretty iconic, stuff Jake would approve of. Um, not necessarily the prettiest corals. Uh, as we know, I, we both worked and enjoyed coral reefing with Jake, and usually it was the uglier corals that Jake gravitated towards. The more interesting ones. The more interesting one. They, uh, Julie and, and Jake reason. shared that passion for yeah. Yeah. The, the ugly ducklings, which were often the coolest. Um, so, yeah. Right. And I'd say one of the things that I've enjoyed the most on this trip is, um, you know, when I before I came here, I didn't really know anybody on this trip um, personally. So just getting to know some of Jake's close friends and colleagues um, that he knew has been uh, just amazing. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and it's I can almost hear Jake say, um, "Yeah, man, when I go, you better glue me to a reef. What the heck, you think I want to sit in a field somewhere? Like, I, yeah." Of course he didn't say that, but I could so, I almost swear that he did say it. But <laughs> yeah. I can't go on record saying it. Um, so, All right. let's carry it out. Let's, let's get it on. started. Let's it. Let's, yeah, for you, Jake. This is where he'll be laying to rest. I think it was a great day. And we are back. <laughs> <laughs> we are back. Uh, oh, that's pretty cool. So, go ahead, Joe. Well, the other thing he was great at drawing you into was a phone conversation that you thought was going to be for 15 minutes, and four hours oh, yeah. later, it's 2 o'clock <laughs> in the morning, and you're going, I have to work. I, got to, I have a life. I can't do this. So, I mean, uh, I, yeah. I, if I answered the phone, I knew there was two hours that I was going to do nothing but talk to Jake at a minimum. Yeah, and you'd, you'd go on one yeah. topic, and you think, okay, we're done, and you would veer into another one. Yeah. And it was it was amazing how adept he was at carrying on a conversation for yes. hours. I mean, that's the one thing I miss is those kind of long conversations because I was in sales and I used to be driving. And if I had a long drive of like six hours, I'd call Jake because I could kill the whole six hours just driving. <laughs> on the road. That's awful. Yeah, my wife would be like, who, who are you on the phone with? I'd be like, Jake. And then she would look at me like, so I guess I'm putting the kids to bed tonight. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> like she knew. Many yeah. times, many times that happened here at the household. <laughs> yeah. He would call me and it'd be one o'clock in the morning. And my wife would go, doesn't he know it's one o'clock? I go, nope, it's Jake. He thinks it's 11 o'clock because he's in Colorado. Colorado. He doesn't think that doesn't far. Exist. He doesn't think that far. Yeah. yeah. <clears throat> but so, getting uh, back to... Uh, back I'm sorry. To video. Yeah, I was going to say, go ahead, Joe. Yeah, so in, in that video, we kind of summed up what the mission was. And what we did is uh, we basically created a reef uh, using Jake's ashes, some of Jake's ashes mixed in with the concrete. And I never knew that you could use concrete underwater. You basically mix it up. It's wet. It's in a plastic bag like you're, you know, kind of like a, a, a baker who's going to put the fleecing on a cake. And that's what we did. We cut the tip off on one corner and we went down. It was about 15 feet. And we split into a couple of groups. Julianne and I was one main group. And then Luke and Steve Garrett was another. And Tony and Steve, uh, uh, Russell, Russell was helping as well, doing photography, handing corals. And we spent about an hour building this reef, you know, taking fragments that Vincent had given us. And then we'd swim out. I, I'll never forget this. Swimming with Julian, who I consider a friend, but also an icon and, and everything, just like all everyone else does. And with bone cutters, was swimming around in the world's ocean, the biggest reef <laughs> ever, looking for cool corals that Jake would approve of to put on his reef with his ashes. I mean, that's and so I was crazy. that's easy. Just pick the problems. I know. Just pick the problems. Back on this dive as 
probably the best dive or day of my life to yeah, be wow. able to do that. And it was such a meaningful dive. Most dives are not that meaningful, even if they're an amazing reef. Not that meaningful. You're diving and you're looking at stuff. But this had purpose and meaning. And it was just like, it was just amazing. Yeah, Vincent Vincent uh, got the troops together and said, you're going to do this, you do that. Yeah. <laughs> and, you know, we, we really, I mean, we knew we were going to do something, but it, it all just came together. Um, <laughs> he, you know, where Vincent was mixing up uh, the concrete and ashes and then just said, here, you go, you right there. <laughs> you know, uh, know this was really our good. first time trying that. And he says, it'll work, don't worry. <laughs> <laughs> we kind of worked it out. It wasn't exactly what we thought. And Vincent said, trust me, we'll come back tomorrow. Everything's going to be perfect. And it was, <laughs> you know. So and we couldn't talk underwater. You know, we were trying no. to communicate, like put your hand here, mix this, grab this, but it's like little, little, little. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah. Joe and Julian were such perfectionists. They kept going, like put it here, and then one would be like, no, 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 <laughs> no, 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 no. Well, and you know, it depended. <laughs> There's really a big difference whether you look at it from above, look at it from the side. You know, you know, you wanted to get that aquascape at least initially <laughs> just right. Of course, the corals are going to grow whichever way they are, but it it, it had to be aesthetically nice. Yeah. So it's the hope, hope uh, it years to come to be able to um, take fragments from that that reef that you guys oh. made. Oh sure. Yeah. I hope. I mean, next year in July. Yeah, I was going to say like just going back there to that site for me will be you know enough. Well, ahead. unfortunately, it's it's a pre, it's a preserve, so I don't know that we can. Yeah, take, not, not take, to remove frags, yeah, right, frags, but, mm. but we'll but be able to take pictures and 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 see it, um, and it, then take frags from that reef through the Ocean Gardeners program, exactly. and transplanted on other reefs. We're thinking of it as hobbyists, but yeah, yeah. yeah and uh, you know the that, but then also you know when Vincent had us go and do the you know when we were doing the spiders and we were you know helping with the other stuff too like i mean that was for me it was like probably the highlight of it just like seeing like the effort and the you know thought that goes into you know coral restoration and what vincent does out there and yeah. um you know that was incredible wow. yeah right for those who might not know the spiders are you know metal structures upon which frags are attached and then grown out uh, and that's this reef that we created was near that site where there there is the uh, basically like a coral farm. Very cool. Let's uh, Chris Meckley. Let's uh, let's let. Oh, go ahead, Tony. All right, I was going to say, and we all participated in the farming, the coral planting on the spiders as well, and um, planted um, you know new reefs in oh. addition to planting for the Jake. Um, how we attach them to the to the spiders? What was the process? Uh, well, Vincent swam around and gave us. Uh, yeah. We were each a pair assigned to a spider. It's about I want to say three feet diameter, and then um, he would give us clippings, or we had clippers and we could clip them ourselves. And there were already zip ties attached, so you stick um a piece of the coral and then try to tighten it as tight as you can and i mean i've never done it before and i was like oh that's it <laughs> yeah so tight on grow into a big coral and um some are fast growers so can't wait to go back and see what's there <laughs> me me too yeah uh, next next year's winter in july yeah, no. I know, I know. <laughs> Do you imagine? Just go up quick. <laughs> Try, flying all that way with him. <laughs> that's, that might be too long of a journey, but I wish and absolutely will one day. That's for sure. And he will be coming too, of course. Yes. This might be your dive buddy. <laughs> So, let, um, Chris Meckley, man, let's uh, let's talk about some of the corals that Jake actually collected that um, we can share as hobbyists and pass along from one another. Um, you, you sent me a bunch of stuff. Let's start with the Acropora Florida, man. That thing is, 
talk that's to us about Toxic did. Florida. That's um, yeah. Jake gave me that coral, and I I always loved Acapora, Florida, and its growth pattern. And Jake and I talked about it all the time. And when he um, told me he had a toxic green one that had been in the aquarium trade for a, a decade or two, um, I was like, well, I need to have a piece of that. And um, of course, we traded corals all the time. And um, that was not something that he collected, but it was just something that he was, you know, loved. And it's the growth pattern. Most people think it when you get a fragment of it, that's the Valley Green Slimer. Joe, you got a, you got some of that, correct? I got one. Yeah. And I, I know Sanjay's got it too. I know, well. I you gave me a piece, Chris. Yeah, everybody in here probably has a piece of it. Um, it the beauty in that coral is when it grows out. You know, it doesn't look like a green slimer anymore. It's got that beautiful thick branches with the uh, little orange nubs. Yeah. Yes. And then the short little branches growing up the whole thickness of the branch. It's such a, an amazing coral. And not many people actually really have a big enough aquarium to actually grow it out properly. Um, but uh, I, I've been wanting to talk about this coral since Julian jumped on here. And Keith, you, you, um, the Cosanera that Jake had. Um, acquired that is you know julian loves lo loves that coral just like jake loved that coral and when i found out about that species it wasn't something i was really um uh had really looked at before and when jake's tasked me with importing some from australia uh we got i think it was in 2015 and i think julian you still have the purple one and the brown one correct yes or the tan one yeah, yeah, and the purple is the really pretty one, right? I, have I need the purple a purple one. Yeah, so you have the purple one too. Yes. Well, there's also one that Jake acquired. Um, I don't even know when he had, when he got this coral, but he sent me a pinky nail sized frag in the summer um, of 2022, and um, that coral is only about this big now. But Keith, you have a picture of that coral. It's absolutely Which stunning. One? The Cosanera. Oh, yeah, yeah. I just showed it. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah that one yeah. there. J Julian's got to get a piece of that here real soon. Um, hopefully in the next you know six months or so, it'll it'll have grown out. But that's yeah. like one of those corals that you just don't see with those kind of colors in it. And yeah. where he found it, I would, uh, I'd love to be able to get bigger pieces of it. Um, yeah, but uh, Jake always had an eye for unique in uh, corals. And, of course, that's why we uh, – the reef builders uh, tasked me with uh, taking over Jake's uh, role in um, the, the three best corals of the shows that I'm at with reef builders, um, which was an absolute blast. Um, but you didn't pick any dis any brown ones. I'm disappointed. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, what about the ones with the cool shapes? <laughs> or the cool around. shape, or whatever. Right? You went for the color. Of, I got a lot of flack for the number one pick saying, you know, why, why did you pick up black plate coral with green polyps? And I'm like, um, just Jake would have gone right to that coral. Um, it, it's something oh, I that just don't see. Um, I got a, I got a red one in with that's exactly the same species. It's black with red tentacles just came in last week. I was like, wow. Um, <laughs> you know, it's uh, really cool to have a green one now. Cause I bought that one. That was the number one that I picked for number one. Um, but back to Jake's corals that he collected himself, um, the Immortal Torch, probably the one that everybody has been wanting. Uh, I know you got a good picture of that one, Keith. Um, yep, showing it. That, that I think he collected that with Tim Kelly over in Solomon. Um, was that 2015? Yep. So that coral's been in captivity for soon 10 years. And... Windsor, just so you know, I'm going to let you know this now. The 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 um, Immortal Tort will be released um, sometime right around Christmas time, and we're taking um, uh, uh, five dollars of each purchase from when people get it will be donated. We have over a hundred frags to release, and that'll be donated to Windsor, you and Reese. Great. So every time we launch a new coral that we've uh, grown out from Jake, especially the ones that he collected. Um, there will be a piece of that every single time will come to you well after the releases is, is is um done for that particular time so we our goal is to to keep it on the market at all times but the demand for anything that jake had uh, people are asking me continuously I, i've got a list of probably 15 people that want the so-called ugly ducklings that nobody uh likes the stuff that julian you know 
and Jake and I geeked about constantly. Um, people really want that stuff, uh, the garden, the serious. Um, I don't yeah. know if, if anybody has that piece of coral um, other than the studio. You remember that piece, don't hey. you, Windsor? Yeah, I think so. Yeah. Honeycomb. Yes, it's oh, um, yes. absolutely yeah. stunning. Well, I remember asking Jake, I'm like, what is this? And he's like, <laughs> thank you for noticing that. I'm like, yeah, right? it's a weirdo. And he's like, it is. Yeah. I, I, I've hey, got hey, people Chris, asking for me, the Palau Astria. Go ahead. Chris, let me, let, let me interject something in terms of Jake's corals and stuff like that. So the last time you were on the live stream with me <clears throat> on Rapid with Reap, um, yes. I think you gave away two Jake, uh, Jake coral packs. I did. And, and the one guy and, still has not gotten it. He's he. I, it's still sitting there. I talk to him like every month or so and say, "When do you want these frags?" And he's like, "When I get around to getting an order from you, um, my my shop's not 100 percent ready." And um, so I said, "Don't worry, they're in good hands. They're going to sit here and just keep getting bigger." And um, but yeah, that was fun. I enjoyed that. So so yeah, the the point I wanted to make is that uh, we did a giveaway of two um, Jake Adams coral packs on that live stream, and um, pretty much you know it was like the twentieth, the thirtieth, and the fortieth per person that reached out to me, you know, via my contact form of the website were the uh, were the winners, and you know it was basically people that were watching the live stream, but. I was getting people reaching out to me via my contact form for like a month afterwards because they knew they weren't going to have a shot at it, but they were just like, you never know. But I think that yeah. kind of speaks to the uh, enthusiasm people have for wanting to get something that Jake, you know, was a part of. So that yeah, says a the, lot. The hardline hoax am I has been, um, you know, it's always been one of my favorite corals since we brought it in for Jake, you know, back, I think it was in 2019 um he um uh, sent me a nice piece of it and it grew fairly well and then there was a bunch of it at the studio and then uh i was kept looking at the mall and rob's like rob and Windsor were both like you know this is the perfect size piece to send out and for you know for some reason and i think i know why it's of course because it was grown under leds for so long it has not grown but maybe an inch or two since i have it um and that surprises me because the one that he sent me two years before that, or a year and a half before that, is just t taken off and growing into a nice, nice, beautiful colony. Um, have you ever had that experience, Joe, where you, you take a coral from um, the from LEDs? Well, actually, you don't grow under metal halides. No, no we don't. <laughs> I, don't even LED, been LED, I don't even know what a metal halide is anymore. Yeah. <laughs> uh, so I don't know what a yellow is, light that shows up once in a while. <laughs> <laughs> I think I bought every metal halide bulb that was available in the United States because I'm afraid they're not going to be making them here soon. But, um, <laughs> <laughs> um, <laughs> but uh, I should send you mine. My yeah. collection. Well, I'll take them. I'll take the. I'll take the pendants for sure. I've got like 350, 400 watt bulbs just waiting to be used. <laughs> but You're um, talking to. Talking about Jake's corals, I just remember listening to Reef Therapy with Mark where, you know, it was funny because he was talking about how he had given you this coral, like, you know, and the coral was like older than your kids. It was like 20 years old or something that he had given this to you like so long ago. Yeah. And it's pretty yeah. wild that, you know, you guys would just trade. You guys just share the corals and you just keep it going. It's pretty cool. Yeah, yeah I Jake have a... All uh, about the... Go ahead. Uh, oh, no, I was going to say, I have a... So I get a weird reaction from hammer corals now. so you know, I shouldn't keep hammer corals anymore. Um, but there's a hammer coral I got from Jake from his Columbia, South Carolina days that I still have. And it's like, I can't bring myself to get rid of it. So I just deal with like, you know, a nasty <laughs> rash and everyone at work thinks there's something wrong with me, but, uh, <laughs> <you know. laughs> um, but I have, I have a clownfish that I, I bought with him when he was in town. Uh, there was an aquarium store called Cappuccino Bay, and they were going to be like a coffee shop and a fish store. Mm, I um, remember that. Yeah, and yeah. Uh, they had a pair of wild-caught Solomon perculas, and I bought them. And I still have the female to this day. And yeah, I mean, my daughter is 13, but that fish I bought in 2004, so old, old enough to drive, right? Or not yet. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Almost. almost. Yeah, almost old, old enough it. to drink. Oh, wait, old enough to drink is what I meant to say. Yeah, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> um, but yeah, uh, 
it, it, it's weird. I mean, I think we all have that now where, the, you know, um, Sanjay uh, mentioned the Sandalitha coral. Um, and then I have corals that I have because of Jake, but not from Jake. So I know Vincent left, but one day I got a phone call and it was Jake and he said, there's a Frenchman coming to stay with you. And I was like, what? <laughs> He's like, you need to pick him up at the airport. Uh, he wants to check out Atlanta. And this is before the Fort Lauderdale Magna. Never met the guy before in my life. So I'm at the <laughs> international terminal. And, you know, luckily, you know, Vincent's a great guy and turned out to be a very nice person staying with me. Um, and then he, you know, asked me, like, what are some corals that, you know, I love that I don't have? And we were just, you know, shooting the breeze. Uh, on my back porch and I brought up an orange her herpelitha, which I, you know, I was like, oh man, those are so cool, but you never see them. And uh, we all went to Fort Lauderdale Magna. We left, you know, we went our separate ways. And it was like months later that I got a message from Unique Corals and they're like, we have a shipment for you from Vincent. And I was like, I don't know what this is. And uh, it was an orange herpelitha. So he, uh, <laughs> I don't know. So business yeah. was, and I, I still have that coral. Specifically, but we would get shipments from Vincent once a month or so at, at, at one point, and they'd often just be writing on the bag, and he wouldn't even <laughs> tell us. I'd be like, Mark, Vin oh, that's a Mark Vin That's cool. All right. Jake Adams. <laughs> yeah, I was like, I didn't order any coral, you know. Um, but I, I was I, I was hoping to tell Vincent I still have that coral as well, but, you know, he had to go. So, but again, I would never have known Vincent if it wasn't for Jake. Um I have a megalodon tooth from Chris. I would never know. Oh, yeah. I would never have met Chris if it wasn't for Jake, right? So it's yeah, it's the connectivity of it all is amazing. Yeah, it is. And the longer you stay in the hobby, the more connections you end up making. And Jake was really good at making the connections. Yes. Yeah, he yeah. was. For sure. He would, he would always make the connection and then bow out. So yeah. it was like <laughs> it was up to you to, <laughs> yeah. to to make that bond, but um he would like okay you two need to talk and then he would just leave because there'd be another coral on another booth that he needed to take a picture of <laughs> right. but, that's, um, that's what happened with you and me right chris i think uh, yeah, one of the shows it was, it was like <laughs> all right you want to you know like we'll just walk around together and <laughs> exactly. you know, jake was like, like wait where did jake go yeah that's that's <laughs> perfect exactly right yeah, yeah. what uh Talking what about, other uh Go ahead, Chris. I was going to say, like, talking on uh, Jake Corals and stuff, um, he was really instrumental in, like, getting me, like, my first aquarium, saltwater aquarium. I've been in the freshwater side for a long time and then went to study marine science and just never had a saltwater aquarium before. And so when he helped me set up my – it was a 20 long in my dorm room. He – got it he was like okay is everything together and I was like yeah did she told me to <laughs> and so he literally <laughs> tossed <laughs> i'm glad he had some basketball skills um he tossed a blasphemusa marletti frag yeah. probably like four or five heads from like the dorm door into the tank and he's like okay you're good <laughs> <laughs> I would have corrected you on that one right there, Chris. It was Pollock's. <laughs> oh. That was that was Jake all the time. Every time I got so used to saying heads because of uh, uh, customers would call the heads of a yeah. toy squirrel, but they're Pollock's, you know? And every time oh, you, definitely. You, talk, you talk to too many customers, he's like, I know you know these things are Pollock's. <laughs> Why are you calling them heads? <laughs> well, and you... You ever notice how you couldn't really curate your collection knowing him because he would just be like, I'm sending you a bunch of corals. And I'd be like, I don't want any corals. And he's like, I'm sending you a bunch of Acropora. I'm like, I'm not into SBS right now. And it's like, I, and so you just had no choice. I mean, just, yeah. you are now. <laughs> you know uh, Mecca, what... Go ahead, Chris. Yeah. Oh, no, I was just going to say, you now have these corals. <laughs> it's yeah. up to him. Yeah. Uh, Chris Meckley, what else do we talk about in terms of Jake's corals? You um, Crystal experiment. How about that one? That's, Man, a good, that's, a, that's got color and the shape. Yeah, you know, I was looking at the colony that uh, I remember when 
Jake asked me to import all these corals that he collected over in um, in uh, Australia, and and Windsor was with him, and he. No, no, no. That was the year before when he got the crystal experiment. But um, the crystal experiment was collected with uh, Vincent and Nick the Santos, and um, they were all picking on him about why did you why did you just pick a green Monty cap? You know what 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 is this? <laughs> and then when he when I got it in for him, I I called him up right away. I'm like, what are you wasting up you know time and freight on a green Monty cap? He's like, just just send it to me. He's like, you'll get a piece back here soon. Just just trust me. And I remember he sends me a piece back and it's just a branch. And I'm like, this isn't the same coil that I imported for you. And he's like, oh yeah, it is. He's like, I took the plate just because I knew everybody was going to give me a bunch of crap about it. And now that it's grown out, it's an absolutely stunning piece of coral. I mean, Joe, yours has to be getting big by now. Um, after, um, you know, I guess that was in January that I sent you a piece and maybe you had some before that, but, um, I cannot, I can't sell it fast enough. I mean, it's, I only have colonies that are like this big and they just have all this distortion in their growth pattern. And he called it aqua tuberculata. The piece that Sanjay sent me about two or three, four weeks ago, that's what I always knew as aqua tuberculata. This thing is, you know, I don't think it knows what it wants to do. Um, but it's such a stunning neon green and you don't know what you're going to get out of the growth pattern with it. And that's, I think what Jake got to see in the wild that nobody else saw until he actually started growing this piece of coral out. And Rob, you've seen it grown out fairly large, um, at the studio. When I was there, there wasn't a whole lot of it, um, at the studio anymore. Um, there was just a, a handful of pieces of it, um, now I have to I'd probably send a whole bunch of it back to the studio just to free up some space because um, you know, it's faster than I'm selling it. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. There are some small pieces, the but nothing said... terribly big. Yeah. Say again, Rob? Oh, there are. you're right. There are some small pieces, but there's nothing that's grown out as big as, as you've indicated. Well, the studio needs one because I need, you know, the eight by eight area in my, in my farm. <laughs> <laughs> And the um, entire flat taken over by crystal experiment. I know. I wouldn't even care to be honest with you. It's it's such a beautiful coral, and and you see it grow like a monty cap. Then you see it throw spires up, and then you see the tips of those spires just flatten out and start capping out again, and then it grows into it like these layers, and then it flattens out and then more spires grow up. They flatten out again. The, the biggest piece we have has, I think four layers, three or four layers in it. And then there's just this oddball branch growing, you know, out to the side this way, going up, you know, in all directions. Um, and then again, they all start flattening out at the tip and just start growing this perfectly round shape. It's, um, he always had an eye for really cool stuff. And um, I wish I'd have had a chance to go diving with him because um, I don't know, we'd have been plucking stuff from everywhere. I'm sure if we were in Australia with Nick, <laughs> but definitely crystal experience, a really cool piece. What you about have the, uh, yours now, Keith? Dude, it, um, so you sent me a frag of it and it, and it grew out probably to like a, um, a four inch, you know, a little mini colony in no time. And then I started to lose it. So I oh, had no. to, uh, I had to frag it up and I, I saved like a three quarter inch piece of it and, and it's, yep. um, and it's, it's, it's recovering, but, um, I had it in a, um, in the back part of one of my tanks and it wasn't getting a lot of light and a, uh, I think it was an Alvia Pora was pretty much, um, you know, brushing up against it. And I think that kind of pissed it off, which it's, is odd it's... because I, I haven't had that experience in terms of an Alvia Pora or Ghani Pora you know, kind of uh, impacting an Acropora, but it seemed like it wasn't, or uh, yeah, it wasn't, it wasn't happy. Yeah. Well, they're, they're, I like to call them flow disruptors because they completely, as they grow out, the, the flow in the system gets completely distorted and changed because they just, they grow so fast and they have those, those layers that they grow in. Um, well, of course, all corals disrupt flow as they grow out, but this one really does affect the, uh, mm -hmm. the flow pattern for store in, in an aquarium. Um, it's aggressive. Yes, aggressive growth, very aggressive growth. Like the Manila Spy. Oh, my gosh. Yeah. Joe, didn't you bring that coral in for him? Probably. I, I'm not <laughs> even sure. 
I'm not even <laughs> sure. These names, like Sanjay pointed out, they all become a blur after time. <laughs> I'm, I'm with you 100%. I, I don't remember names of 90%. No, of the I, I hear you. I, I want to. I a lot of these so that's so that's that's something that uh, Jake was very adamant about, right? In terms of you know, very pro scientific name and not Latin into the names, name game, yes. and and you know that's that's something that's very well entrenched in the hobby right now in terms of the whole marketing of corals and high end corals that have the uh, fancy names and the high price tags. But well, um, that's Joe, you know, Joe is part of the problem. I was part of the problem. <laughs> well, oftentimes people that are, are part of the solution were part of the problem. So one of the conversations I had with Jake, one of the last conversations was kind of like a joke of making a website, no name corals.com, where it would be just scientific, no names, no bull. You could still have your blue light. You could have your blue and your white, but this is, you know the Latin gene, the genus species. We don't care about who named what. I mean, maybe you could bury it in a copy somewhere, also known as, but that's not the selling feature. I and like we were onto something. Yeah, um, you were. I mean, I've had these conversations with Jake before. Yeah, yeah, yeah that's that's minds. an excellent way to suppress profit. <laughs> it is. Who wants to be the more first? Right. I think you got this crazy idea one time and I ran it by Jake and I'm like, you know what? I'm so sick of trying to figure out names for new releases as the farm stuff grows out and you get, we get 50 to hundred fragments to sell commercially. And I got to come up with a name for this coral. And I'm asking the entire crew, Hey, figure out a, figure out a name for this, you know, um, my city in here. And nobody could figure out a name. And I'm like, you know what? I'm just going to say it's Mike, the my city. Right. And, and people were like, that's pretty cool. I like that. Jake's like, I love it. Keep doing it. So I started naming corals, you know, Mike to Mycidium. It was uh, Eric to Echinata. It was, um, <laughs> you know, um, AJ the Acro and all these different na people names with, you know, the the actual Latin name of the of the coral. And I have people still to this day going, hey, you still have Mike in stock. Or do you have Dave in stock? And I'm like, so happy that that caught on because mm -hmm. I'm like, but do you remember what Dave was? Was it a, what was it? <laughs> it was a Dipsastria, you know? And that was back when Fabia got switched to Dipsastria and we were starting, you know, Jake was always talking about the new um, uh, classifications and it was nice because we had so many Fabias that were just growing for literally three to five years to get a hundred frags grown from one single fragment out and you know, we had all these, what we thought were going to be cool names at the time. And then, you know, Dipsastria was what they changed to. So we started naming we named Dave to Dipsastria, Devin to Dipsastria. Um, you know, that kind of stopped after a while. But uh, my man and I were talking about the other day and saying, you know, Jake would be like really probably pissed that you stopped doing that because people don't know what they actually have. And it's like when I was a kid and doing African cichlids, um, my mentors, you know, taught me the Latin names of the, of the African cichlids. Of course, nowadays, if I went back to African cichlids, I'd feel like a novice all over again, even though right. I'm looking at this fish one that used to be this. No, it's now, you know, it's been changed and there's, you know, new classifications for everything, um, on the African cichlids side, actually everything, you know, I look at all the freshwater classifications and I feel completely like a novice now, but trying to remember and, and Keep up with the taxonomy of corals is something that I'm still very adamant about because um, I remember just having fun talking to Jake about, you know, these new classifications. And um, I just wish that that's the way the hobby was, was more about the, you know, the genus and species, because I think um, the ups, it, it turned the the or the industry kind of got turned upside down and nobody even knows what they actually have. They just know this Looney Tune name that means nothing but dollars. And the, the the coral itself is forgotten about the way I the way I look at it. You know, the beauty of the actual coral itself is um and, and the Latin name of it and why it's called that. Just like, you know, tenuous is no longer tenuous and people are like, What? It's like their heads are gonna explode because you can't, you know, the new it's by fun. It's still the home record. It's still a home record, yeah. <laughs> but it's now instead of it's tenuous, it's a bifron. <laughs> So you guys can switch Until your name around, but our names are already cast in stone here. <laughs>
until the colors that. change to your to your parameters and then it changes to another name. Well, then it becomes a Walt Disney or something else. You know? <laughs> right? <laughs> but that, 27 that, different Walt Disney. So Walt's probably yeah. rolling over in his grave about that. <laughs> I'm surprised Walt Disney Company hasn't come after the people that are calling it Walt Disney and say right. like the no Jedi. Kidding. <laughs> I think the Jedi mind trick was um something happened with that and they had to take Jedi out of it and put mind trick is what I was told. Did they really? Oh, we've really? received we've received many seasons. No, that was that was actually. Oh, you did. Oh, you did. Got you yeah. for yeah. Uh, not for the Jedi mind trick for Our Stranger Things. He, he for called it Catherine the Jedi. Really. Rick. Then the Catherine disappeared, and then they had to take the Jedi off of it. But that was named by Mark Coletti because I sent him the fragment. Gotcha. No, we I'm just in Joe's trip. story here. You got a season desist on several names? Yeah, I want to hear this one. <laughs> one was the scientist <laughs> yeah, that, That'll start next. Cease and desist orders on the coral names. Well, he yeah. already has. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Uh, sun kissed Stranger Things. We had to remove Sun Kissed from the name. Oh, uh, really? And the Stranger Things tort, I think we had. We had to remove Stranger Things. And these wow. letters are well drafted. You know, they're they're legal. Serious. <laughs> Coming from yeah, that's crazy. Oh, it's the coral. <laughs> well, what about Superman Monty? That's been around since Tubbs named it back in what, 2002? <laughs> what about Surprise. the Sprung Echinata? Hasn't Sprung sent you a season? Does this letter yet? Yeah. <laughs> I just read the Sprung Stunner. <laughs> <laughs> I just sent him a purchase order and then he stopped. Yeah. <laughs> oh, purchase order of it. Okay. Done. <laughs> so, yeah. so besides, um, you know, promoting scientific names, what other things can we do to help, you know, promote Jake's legacy? I think that was one of his biggest parts of his legacy was that, you know, he was so adamant about that. Um, it's definitely up there on the top of things that he he was very passionate about. Um, <laughs> what else? I'd Chris? say. Well, oh, go ahead. No, I'm going to jump in just because I'm going to have to leave in a minute. <laughs> but I mentioned this in the chat. Um, you, you know, listening to all of you share your stories about Jake and how you wound up with corals that you never asked for, or a piece <laughs> of a coral and it went back. And, and I know we. We wrote about it a while ago, but that reefer's code um, reefer's is code. really one of his, you know, that that's all of the, the longstanding um, the legacy uh, and just the ethic of how we treat, how we treat each other as hobbyists, as fellow hobbyists and fellow chorus. I think that's something we can really um, try to remember because Jay, you know, we, you, every single person in this, uh, in this uh, discussion has pretty much had a personal experience with that from him and uh, that generosity uh, that he had. So that would be just a great thing for all of us to remember as we go forward. Something and Reefer's Code, um, Reefer's Code, Matt, is basically uh, I would send you corals and then you send me corals right back and no money exchanges hands. Right. Yep. I mean, uh, Jake had me write that article for him. That was the first article I wrote for Jake was the Reefer's Code where it talked about how we took care of each other, how we looked out for each other, how we traded with each other, and how it wasn't all about money. It was about enjoying the company of the other hobbyists and the passion that we all shared about the hobby. And well, uh, I, we, were, we were literally sitting in a bar and he goes, can you write an article for me on how it used to be and how everybody used to take care of each other? And that's how that evolved. Well, that was the hobby we grew up in, Jake and I, right? right. I mean, we were kids. And uh, were yeah. when I met him, I mean, he was, what, 16, 15 years old, you know, and We'd get our Fama magazine and chat about uh, reef notes, you know, Julian's uh, articles and stuff. <laughs> yeah. um, but Julian and it was 16 a... when he wrote them, but, you know. <laughs> yeah. I remember the uh, the party in the back. Yeah. <laughs> party, yeah. Party, party in the party back. In the Absolutely. Back. Yeah. Yes. Um, <laughs> I, even, I, had his, I had your VHS even. Like, I had a VHS cassette uh, that you, I think you made back in the day. Oh, anyway. I have that one, too. Yeah, but I mean that was that was the that was what the hobby was like for us when we were teenagers, you know. And um, I remember a, um, a lawyer, you know, a high-profile lawyer guy with a nice car. His uh, he went on vacation. His whole tank crashed, and I was like a, you know, a twenty-one-year-old guy, and I I let him know like, oh, I can give you some frags, you know. And I became friends with that guy, 
And it's just so random to like that to be like in your early 20s and friends with a, a, law, a business lawyer, you know, but the but the hobby is what brought you together. And it was that reefers code kind of thing. Yep. Um, and I think that's why we were always yelling at the clouds on reef therapy, because that's the hobby that we were nostalgic for, you know, so I think reefers code is a great, great thing to keep going. Definitely. I mean, yeah. I keep it going as much as I can, um, you know, happy to trade frags with anybody here. I mean, you know, stuff that, especially stuff that Jake, you know, was, was near and dear to his heart. You know, anybody wants pieces of the corals, you know, that's on this, this, this you know, chat with everybody right now. I mean, happy to just reach out. I'm happy to bust a frag off and send it your way, especially if I have enough of it. The Cosanera, Julian, that'll come down the road. <laughs> just not, just not big enough to cut up yet, but you know, anything that's there, you know, it's, it's just carrying on what Jake loved. So one thing I, I would say he definitely brought um, to the industry was, and I know Windsor, you probably know this best, right? Because he, you guys would just hit the local fish stores, right? He was such a big proponent of doing that. And I know anytime he went and visited and traveled somewhere, um, you know, that was like his first thing. He'd go yeah. to the store, you know, wherever he was traveling to. And um, so that, and I think the other one, you know, especially being a, a novice in the, in the, you know, um, in the in the hobby you know i'm an engineer by 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 trade so i would always overanalyze things and he'd always tell me dude just it's so simple just you know just don't overthink it you know like relax it's okay (laughs) um so i feel like he probably told a lot of people that you know it's not that complicated if you just kind of take a step back and you know just do the fundamentals and the basics just just remember your fundamentals he he was also very big on not putting anything that you don't need on an aquarium to the point where you strip everything off even the refugium which caught the attention of julian and i'll never forget (laughs) Jake and julian and i it was riveting i mean it was like it was like a boxing match it was like what's he gonna say to that it was awesome it was the debate Yes. That was one of our one of the best Macna events ever. Was watching the two of them have a discussion. Yes. <laughs> I so, hate to say, it, Julian, Jake was correct. <laughs> <laughs> it's so funny, you know. That's that, no, I've I've simplified the entire you know farm that we have. It used to have all this other fancy stuff that we used, and it's just like you know go back to the basics, you know, back to the way it was when I first started reefing. Why am I doing all these things mm-hmm. because of the, you know, and, and you go out to the reef builder studio today and you see um, if they're still on, but you saw talc washer dosing, you saw a calcium reactor and on some of the systems you had dosing pumps with, you know, um, to, to dose for alkalinity and, and calcium, but um, it was just simple. Mm-hmm. And, it's so much easier when you just don't complicate things. Like, you know, like you said, Joe, it's just keep it simple. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Sanjay and I've had this discussion as we did with Jake. Why did we have so much success in the eighties and the early nineties when we had basically simple nuts and bolts systems? Now we have all this extra equipment, all these extra things we're doing. We're testing all these things. We're not any more successful than we were then, at least in my opinion. Mm-hmm. Well, you guys also have nowadays the whole um, push for not using real live rock. And honestly, I believe that the, that that new setups are missing the the natural microphone. I mean, Joe, I just bought two boxes of live rock from you because that's the only thing that's different between my newest farm system and the uh, the existing ones. But there was no real live rock to to seed it. It was all dry rock, and I I bought I think I bought an entire pallet of um, Julian stacks rock just to make a rock wall. And I wanted to see what would happen, but I think, um, you know, Jake would probably agree with it because he had, um, we talked about that before and I didn't really think there was anything, any merit to it. But now that I'm three years into this system, you know, why are all these other systems keeping corals alive when this system cannot, even if I take it from, you know, that particular coral that's problem child and put it over into a, the, uh, an older system, most of the time it completely recovers from the issues it was having. So I bought some rock from Joe to stick in there. And um, I think that's something Jake would have agreed upon is if you've exhausted every other option, you know, go back to the very basics. Real live rock is probably something that's bringing, you know, coming in on that rock that is 
extremely beneficial to you know uh, closed systems. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Something that that Luke mentioned earlier that I think is really important when you talk about Jake's legacy was promoting local fish stores. Mm -hmm. promoting an avenue to be able to get new hobbyists into the environment and promoting the fact that that um, it's great that we can go buy things from Joe online and we can buy things from other folks online, but we really need to make sure we're supporting our local stores because that provides an avenue for things that are unique that we may not see or it provides an avenue to get other folks into the hobby. And I think I thoroughly enjoyed, um, you know, his videos when he went around locally here in Denver. I got to go on a couple of those trips. Always fun. Um, but unlike many of you, I benefited from the reefer's code of fish. So inevitably, Jake would find something cool. Being local, it was easy. And I'd get a phone call. You have to come over. And lo and behold, he found some weird little hybrid pygmy angel. And it's like, here. <laughs> you know, and it was, it's just very fun to be able to share not just corals, but other things that are aquatic. Um, but certainly his, his passion for fish stores was, was something that I think is, is lacking and that we need to be able to, to uh, address in other manners. Uh, what else folks, what else uh, can we uh, talk about in terms of pre preserving that legacy? I mean, I, I, I always, um, I always hear how he impacted people a lot because of his passion, right? His passion for the hobby, his passion for, um, you know, all things reef, all things, you know, like uh, aquarium. It, I, yeah, and and I don't even know. I mean, because I that I think is what drew so many people to the industry, right? With these videos and, um, you know, the connections with people, like the the reefers code, like all that stuff, and. I think trying to kind of, you know, um, propagate that and push that on that, I mean, that would have been what he would have wanted is to, to keep that passion strong in the industry, yeah, whatever I mean, that I looks like. What, <laughs> I mean, I think a common theme that we're talking about here is that Jake would go above and beyond, you know, for, um, for somebody in the hobby that needed help and he would go above and beyond to promote the goodwill for for this uh, marine aquarium hobby so and and that that was um something that just showed you know in terms of his passion and that's what made him so unique and i think that's what um you know really impacted a lot of people when when we lost jake is is that uh that's one hell of a void mm -hmm. to try to fill uh yeah, you know jake... my... so sorry <laughs> Go ahead, Joe. Now, what, what Jake, and I think everyone can relate, like Julian said, you know, he was intimidating. And what he would do is he'd, he'd ask a bunch of questions and study what you were doing and see the stuff <laughs> that you saw with your blinders on. You knew were there, but you, you chose to ignore because <laughs> it was uncomfortable or awkward to deal with, or it was simply easier or because you were too lazy to deal with it. And he would get in your face and point it out to you like no one would do. Yeah, and you would put the friendship almost on the line because it was uncomfortable. Mm. And sometimes if I wasn't in the mood, I wouldn't, I just, I like, Jake, I can't, I can't deal with you right now because you're just too <laughs> far. <too real. laughs> um, but you seem to crave that because so many people take the opposite approach and tell you what you think you want to hear because they want to play it safe or they just don't have the energy or the ability to articulate what your problem is realize you're going to put a defensive wall up that he's then going to have to tear down with facts and anecdotal evidence and then show you where you should be going and where your train derailed and <laughs> and have somebody like that on your team on your side is so rare and so rare i miss him i miss it yeah what's oh, that absolutely. saying about um You've got friends that tell you what, what you want to hear, but your real friends tell you what you don't want to hear. But you didn't. And he would that, scream it, at me. He would, he would, oh, why are you yeah. selling fish? Didn't I tell you? Don't sell fish. You're <laughs> going to waste your money. And you know what? It took me two years and probably $100,000 to realize that he was right. Oh, yeah. <laughs> why am I guy selling fish? He's like, yeah. just do corals, yeah. do clams. Forget about fish. They're too hard. <laughs> that was 10 years ago. Uh, Joe, I think you hit the nail on the head, you know, with this whole, you know, he, he, um, 
we were experimenting with some things because he was having issues and I was having issues. He wouldn't let me even do experimentation on my own systems until he did it first. And he and I came up with some ideas on how to, to, to do these treatments. And he's like, no, he's like, you don't do anything. Let me do it first. I'll kill my stuff if it's going to be bad. You need to make sure that you don't hurt your systems. And Jake and I came up with a lot of different, um, which was anecdotal, but turned out to be something that really worked extremely well uh, for a lot of different aspects of uh, a lot of corals. And he saved his studio in some in some cases because of the experimentation that him and I worked and brainstormed together on. But yeah, he does get in your face. That's for sure. <laughs> So, so the... too. <laughs> yeah, I'm like, okay, I was right, actually. Most of the time. <laughs> just imagine, just yeah. imagine being in invertebrate zoology with him and oh, yeah. trying to argue <laughs> marine <laughs> ecosystems with him. I could never. <laughs> yeah, like, Jake and I, we overlapped two years at the University of South Carolina. We never met then. And I'm so yeah. glad because <laughs> that would not have been the Jake I wanted to be with. I wanted the one that was in his, you know, later 30s. The, oh, goodness, the 21, 22 year old Jake. No, thanks. That was, that was fun. Uh, it was intense. Oh, yeah, I bet. It was. <laughs> like in a relationship. So, um... <laughs> So, so Remy in the chat mentions definitely want to continue LFS Saturday. Who who wants to talk about LFS Saturdays? What is it? Um, I own a few LFSs. LFSs. Yeah. Um, <laughs> Jake was always awesome at reaching out and be like, "Hey, we're going to talk about uh, LFS Saturdays on on uh, Reef Builders." So, you know, this is the time we want to promote stores. So, send me pictures or send me some info. Yep. Um, he That's was cool. on that, and even you know that was what he believed in. Mm -hmm. For sure, promoting so, a local store, you know, getting people to go into the store physically, go right. into your store, spend money, buy something. Don't ask for a discount. Um, you know, support. Right. Buy <laughs> exactly. buy it on Amazon. Tag us on Rate Builders. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> that, there was a, there was an effort that many many retailers know, which was Small Business Saturday. Right. Right, which was started to be able mm. to get folks into local business to be able to spend money. And he really liked that idea and a applied it to local fish stores. And it really was well received, not only by the local stores, but it also provided a mechanism to remind folks that that's, that's where we needed to pay our attention, right? To, to and to uh, just like just what I heard and I laughed at, but it's so true. Is 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 um, when Joe said, "Don't ask for a discount." Right? These are the livelihoods of folks that help you keep your hobby, and so go spend some money and spend and and thank those people that are out there that are working so hard to ensure that we have the ability to have the selection that's presented to us for those of us that are still lucky enough to have good local fish stores in our area. Yeah, Colorado has some really good, the uh, Denver area has some really good fish stores. Fish they stores. do. And really Jake do. and I, whenever I came to that area, Jake would take me around to all these fish stores. Um, yeah. and, and you know, that's some of the ones you actually would have. Absol absolutely. One that's, time or the other. Well, right. that's actually when I first met Jake was when he had just graduated high school and yeah. he was working at a local fish store and he had the the Jake attitude at that. He did. <laughs> that's why he didn't last long at the fish doors, but he did work there. <laughs> that's right. That's right. Yeah. <laughs> so I told you the origin story of me and how I met Jake, right? Which was all around local fish stores where I walked in. Uh, there was a Colorado fish store he worked at as a teenager. And I was getting a degree in biology and I thought I was pretty smart. And I'd go down there and there was this punky kid, like just trying to school me the whole time. And I didn't like him. Um, there was like a cute girl working there. And I kept hoping she would like, cause she, she knew her stuff too, but like, she was a lot friendlier and um, a lot more attractive. <laughs> um, you know, I was in college, but uh, you know, this punky kid just kept, you know, and he's, I mean, he literally sent me home with my first uh, SBS frag an acro frag and a stick of super glue. It was like, 
yeah, just go glue this to one of your rocks, you know? Um, <laughs> but then I graduated and I moved to Atlanta and I moved my whole reef tank with me in a U-Haul. That was, an, that's a whole story <laughs> in itself in the middle of winter. Um, and I go to the local fish store and there's Jake sitting at the counter. And like, we both look at each other twice, like, like, you know, we recognized each other. Like, what are you doing here? And apparently it was the same owner owned both stores and asked him to go manage the Atlanta store and just happenstance that I also relocated to Atlanta. That's an amazing. So, and that then we did become friends because it was like, we're both like, we both didn't know anybody in the city and, you know, you know, then I tolerated some of his attitude a little more, you know, I had to. So. Okay. I just want to know if that's true for everybody that, that there was that initial I don't know what I think of this guy. <laughs> oh, yeah. Yep. Right? Even me. Uh, <laughs> even me. 100%. And we didn't really talk a whole lot the first Of course. Years. <laughs> yeah. Right. Yeah. Well, listen, everybody, I, uh, I want to be respectful of everybody's time here. I, I see we've lost a couple of uh, guests in the, uh, in the stream, so I know we're, uh, we're already over the two-hour mark here. Um, what, uh, what else should we, uh, you know, what, what should we say in terms of wrapping this up? Any, uh, any final thoughts? I miss my Still friends. Got it, Rick. I yeah. miss my husband, <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I miss my friend, you know. Mm -hmm. so, missed the long conversations about you know kids and about um reefing and taxonomy and the reaper's code and all that stuff you know that's something that you know it's going to be hard to replace and um you know, definitely miss it yeah i'll miss I, him calling me up sorry Lindsay. oh no i mean i was i'll go last <laughs> how about okay. that Oh, I miss I miss waiting for that phone call a week before Reefa Palooza or something for the cra the, the the couch surfing champion Jake. He's like, <laughs> "Hi Joe." I'm like, "What's up, Jake?" He's like, "You gonna rap?" I'm like, "Yep." He goes, "Can I crash in the couch?" Oh my god, I can hear him. <laughs> it's so That's true. Cute. It's so That's true. Cute. <laughs> I remember the first time he came to came to down this down my way and to check out ACI and um he's like, Hey, I'm gonna be in Florida, I'm gonna be over at uh Rich Palooza. I'm gonna stay for an extra couple of days. Can I uh crush your couch? And I'm like, What? <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, I don't think I've ever asked somebody to just crash in their couch and uh I mean it's like, um, Where's he gonna sleep? And I'm like, um, on the couch. <laughs> <laughs> on the floor, on the couch, doesn't matter. <laughs> <laughs> he, didn't he was so funny. He he thought I was rich. I'm not rich. Like, you gonna buy me a drink? I'm like, yeah, I'll buy you a drink. Oh. <laughs> You're sleeping on my couch. I'll buy you a drink. Uh, <laughs> I'll never forget the time him and Evan came over. Um, I guess it was for Reefa Palooza the, the one year. Um, and I went and picked him up, him and Evan, and they both stayed at my house. And um they both wanted to drink some something other than beer. And I had a bottle of Johnny Walker Blue that I hadn't touched oh. since, um, I don't know, probably since Christmas, because I started drinking the Johnny Blue when my uncle passed away, and it was his drink. And Evan and him, were like, I guess Jake had it, but Evan never had it, and they started drinking this Johnny Blue, and I had to take it from Evan. And Jake's like, yeah, you better take that. He's like, you got something else? I'm like, yeah, I'll give him some of this Bundaberg rum. And Jake's like... <laughs> I really like this stuff. So Jake's just drinking this rum, mm. but it was like, um, you know, uh, it was like family being here, honestly. Um, it, it's what it felt like because uh, you know, the kids were having fun. Jake and Evan were drinking beers. We were playing laser tag in the backyard. Love this. Um, That's yeah, amazing. Just brought back that you talking about him crashing on the couch, Joe. Just just brought back yeah. every single time he had come down here and every time he crashed on the couch was probably, you know, at least a half a dozen or a dozen times. <laughs> yeah. I remember this story. Jake was going to come. He was going to stay at our house. And I, of course, I didn't give him a couch. I gave him a room. I had enough space in my house. <laughs> and before he was coming, before he was going to get there, I told my wife I have to go to the liquor store. And she goes, why? Don't you have enough liquor in the house? I go, no, I need to buy some cheap stuff. <laughs> He's gonna finish my good stuff. He would. <laughs> That's amazing. Yeah. So Joe, on on that note, I would always 
if a, if I was making a show, I would always call him up and be like, hey, does Reef Builders have an extra bed or an extra <laughs> spot? And he's like, yeah, I got you. Don't worry. And so I was like thinking I'd be sharing the room with him. But then he would put me in some other buddy's room that I'd never <laughs> met before in the industry. But he was he made that connection. And it was oh, just. Cool. <laughs> yep. Yep. I remember the Fort Lauderdale one. It was like, I got this nice hotel room, uh, courtesy of Reef Builders, and I had like beautiful ocean view. And I sent pictures to my wife. I'm like, this is awesome. And then all of a sudden, like, I go down and meet with Jake, and he's like, I gave your room away. I'm like, what? <laughs> he's like, yeah, you'll be crashing with me. I, did I give it to you, Chris? Like, who took that room? I don't know. Somebody uh, that I. I think Lauderdale was staying with Gresham. Okay. Yeah. I don't know. Somebody, he, he had Wait, so I didn't given before, away my room. Then, oh. yeah. <laughs> I mean, that was, that just came with the territory when you were yeah. traveling with him, you know, you just had to <laughs> go with the flow. So, yeah. yes. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah. It was always a good a good experience though. Yeah. It was. Always memorable. Let's hear from you, Keith. I mean, what was you know, you had some really good times, you know, chatting with Jake, you know, personally and um, you know, you haven't really put your put your uh you know, um what 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 what's gonna be memorable for you? Oh boy. You know, I, I, I got to know Jake on, on my uh, live stream, really. I mean, that was, you know, I, I had him on a few times and, you know, I think <clears throat> the first time I met Jake, I only met Jake once in person and we were supposed to meet for a second time in person at uh, the last uh, Magna. But I think Windsor, you, you guys had some plane issues and you couldn't make the show, yeah. right? On Jade. Mm -hmm. Got some Jade. Jade. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. So yeah, the first time I met Jake was like in, you know, this this is like a relatively new friendship for me. You know, it was 2017 and I met him at, at the Reef of Palooza in New York. And, you know, I was a fledgling uh, YouTube person who was trying to like, you know, make a mark and whatnot. And I was walking around the uh, the showroom floor and, and uh, I saw Jake just sitting there at the, uh, the Reef Builders um, booth. And I just like came up to him very awkwardly. And I was like, hey, uh, Jake, you know, I introduced myself and can you just say a few words for me? I'm making this video on Reef of Palooza. And he, um, you know, I think he spoke for like five or 10 minutes and he just was very accommodating and he was just totally like, yeah, I'm doing this. And, and um, he wasn't, um, you know, no pretensions or what have you. He was just very, very, um, you know, open honest and helpful and and i just really appreciated that and then um so i don't think we you know we really had any contact for a couple of years and then you know when i started doing the show in 2020 i uh i just sent him a message via instagram you know to see if he would be interested in being a guest on my show not expecting to get an answer and and he did respond and you know so i had him on the show and it was it was a great time i got to know him on the show that first show and and then uh i think uh, i had him on again and then i had you uh, chris and and him on at the same time and that was like a great conversation so we really became kind of like reef keeping brothers via that show and then he was reaching out to me like hey can i be on your show i gotta promote reef stock and all that stuff and just talk about whatever and and uh so it was, uh, you know, it was great. And I think it, you know, it, it says a lot in terms of like just meeting somebody one time in person and having several conversations online and, you know, and, and then, you know, hearing the news a little over a year ago that he just uh, suddenly passed just really rocked my world, you know, and, and all of you folks have much more, you know, um, much more history with, with with jake than i do in terms of you know being around him and in person and all that stuff but uh you know it 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 rocked me and i think that's the other thing in terms of just seeing the um you know the folks out there in the reef keeping community that didn't know jake at all he his passing really impacted a lot of people alex really did Carrera. look at alex yeah Carrera. He, he he commented on here he never even really I don't think he even ever had a chance to meet Jake. Um, and 
he he would call he called me up and was like you know i i can't believe this happened and it was it really hit him hard and i didn't you know i realized how many other people that didn't even know him it just impacted them because of you know his charisma and his videos and his just you know just a likable personality and he was so smooth in everything that he talked about when he did his videos and people just loved him for you know putting out real you know content and it was no bullshit it was just straight up what Jake's opinion was on a, on a, on a review on a, on a product. Um, if people didn't like it. He didn't care. Um, <laughs> you know, and that's what I think it was, you know, everybody loved that, but yeah. Well, and he used this button yeah. for, for good, you know, I mean, I think, um, you know, obviously he was, you know, he was building something and, and, and hoping to make a living off of it, but you could tell that, his mission statement or what, wh why he was doing it. Like he wanted to make the hobby better, you know, I mean, the local fish store, you know, Sundays. Um, I mean, the whole reef therapy thing, like we would just talk and I would complain about the direction of the hobby. And, and, you know, he was like, well, like, let's stop complaining and let's do something about it and let's start talking about it. And he had that mindset, you know, where it's like, let's not just, complain about what's wrong let's actually try to fix it or let's do something about it and i always admired that about him i mean setting up reef stock all the things he did like he 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 had a mission you know and and to me that was uh like he wasn't just in it for i, I don't even want to say the money like it wasn't even it, like for him there was so much more <laughs> to this hobby and he wanted to he wanted to make it better you know and that's i uh, to me that was always evident and i think that's why he resonated with a lot of people because they saw that sincerity um you know whether it was on youtube or or in person they could tell that he really 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 passionately cared about the hobby and and where it was going you know he was driven yeah you know uh there's um when i was going through his stuff he had this high school journal um and i told i told windsor about it and it was just weird because i mean he wrote this whole thing and it was like just these like kind of odd stories and I pulled it up tonight because I was kind of curious if there's any tidbits and, you know, there's the first page he kind of writes, you know, he's got like a little, a little blip, but then he's got two quotes in there, which are really interesting because you just, what you just said, Mark, but one of them was uh, that there are three types of people, those that make it happen, those that watch it happen, and those that wonder what happened. And I, you know, I, I can't, I can't help but think, you know, that like how that, that's so Jake, right. In terms of like, he was that guy that made it happen, right. Whether it was yeah. um, with any of the stuff that he, put his hands on so yeah oh that's special remember his um his signature in his email when there's nothing left to burn <laughs> <laughs> that's right on fire yeah, yeah. Oh, i always laughed when i saw that but yeah that's so <laughs> there was one before Wait, that too oh really which one was that Wait, i'm trying to remember what that was <laughs> it was oh god um <laughs> I have to dig it up, but it was, <laughs> it, was it was one that made the uh, even made me kind of be like, who am I talking to in college? Um, <laughs> yeah, the, um, the 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 thing that I miss the most, and I think a lot of us can relate, is you know, like you, you just you pick up your phone and you're like ready to call, you know, because we all like just we talk to them all the time, you know, and you, you're just such a good person to talk to about anything so that's definitely the hardest part the weirdest thing for me was um and it's still i haven't changed it i know why it's doing it now but every time windsor would text me since he passed it comes up jake adams yeah and every time i go to her to text her or something when i look at my phone it says jake adams it doesn't say windsor and i go to windsor adams phone number and text her and it still goes under jake and um that was really weird at, at first because i had both numbers programmed in my phone and why it did that and i realized i didn't re i didn't realize i had windsor's number in jake's contact at the same time That's and like because i guess i talked to jake so frequently <laughs> that every time i messaged her and still to this day it diverts away from windsor to jake and it just pops up and so yeah, just keep it there like that <laughs> yeah, yeah. Your favorites, right? Yeah. Yep. He's still in my favorites. 
<laughs> I think his phone number has already been given to someone else now. So I obviously yeah. don't call it, but yeah, still at the top. Um, so Windsor, this is very fitting. Little uh, Reef is um, oh, he's starting to wake up a little bit, but he's he's right next to a picture of his daddy right there. But uh, do do you want to say you want to you want to kind of uh, wrap it up for us there? Any final words? Yeah, um, I mean, obviously, I I don't recognize my life now. You know, I we had such a plan, which of course included this little guy, and you know, he kind of as we were talking about especially Joe mentioned when he was wanting to start the studio, he's like, okay, I'm, I'm leaving now. I'm leaving California. I'm going to do this thing. You know, his next thing that he wanted to do was to do actual coral farming. So he, we had yeah. every intention of potentially moving our young family, you know, to be with like Vincent or something and doing that. Cause he's like, I've never done that. You know, I've never actually lived you know, at the beach to be able to do coral farming on a daily basis. So, you know, there's so many things that, you know, he wanted to do and we were going to do together. And so it's, you know, I'm still trying to find my footing of like, what is my life? Um, obviously everything's dedicated to raising reef now. And I've got reef builders, you know, I'm, I'm a part owner and, you know, that's keeping me going and, trying to keep his legacy going and make sure that everyone still remembers him. Cause you know, I'm going to keep screaming his name, you know, at the top of my lungs for the rest of my life. You know, you know, when you become a widow, it just seems like people just sort of eventually kind of go back to their own lives. And we're kind of still in this spot of what, what do I do now? But I will say having all of you in getting all of these messages from people that I've never met, you know, and hearing these amazing stories of how much Jake, you know, influenced them and meant something to them. I'm, I'm so grateful for all of that because I feel so supported. I feel surrounded by so much love and, you know, the I, nest egg. Yeah. The nest egg. Yeah. It's I will never forget that. Oh, well, okay. Well, <laughs> Jake, uh, you know, he would sometimes say things like, ah, you know, I don't know how long I'll live that kind of stuff, which is like hearing, you know, saying that out loud now makes me sick, but I'm like, what are you going to do? Like, leave me with a young child. And he's like, oh, you'll have a nest egg. And I'm like, what are you talking about? <laughs> yeah, I'm sure he thought money or something, but I, I realize now that my, my nest egg is, it is all of you. You know, he brought us all together as we discussed, you know, he brought all these individuals together and it's created this incredible family. And I know I can call any one of you right now and be like, you know, I need help. And I know I will get that. And it's all because of Jake, you know, and he, he's all around us. And I know that we'll be okay. And I have such a beautiful catalog of all of his work his life's passion, you know, Reef will know his dad, not only from his own amazing content, but all of your stories, you know, I will visit every single one of you and Reef will be able to hear all of that. And it's, it's just incredible. So I'm so grateful for that groomsman that I met at Chris Carney's wedding. <laughs> I had no idea that I was meeting my future husband. And my ten, ten years ago, ten years ago, yep, October thirteenth, ten years ago, yep, I met him. Yeah, I heard the flat, the flask sloshing in his pocket, <laughs> <laughs> and I was like, "Oh my god, that is so funny!" I remember telling a <laughs> friend who I was with, I was like, "I oh, can hear the flask sloshing." <laughs> That was Jake. And he told yeah, I told him that later. And he's like, Are you serious? You can hear it? I'm like, yes. And he's like, Oh well, it's my job to keep the groom, you know, well lubricated. Really like, oh, got it. Got it. Sure. <laughs> sure it was. But yeah, I just was ninety percent for him. I, <laughs> yeah, I, was like, yeah. I don't know how it's cool this but yeah. Yeah. So all of you, I mean, and obviously my family now, 
Jake's family, Luke, Chanel, the kids, you know, the grandmas, the aunties. I've, I've got such an incredible support system and I'm forever grateful to Jake for this incredible life he's given me, you know, ours together was unfortunately cut so short, but you know, he'll live on through all of us through reef. You know, I know I can count on all of you to help get his first reef tank going. <laughs> it better be big. Of course. Of course. Is it going to be the 400 gallon? <laughs> we got to get going. Oh, yeah. Um, buddy. Allie, one, uh, more, one more thing. I just wanted to thank, uh, yeah, I just wanted to thank uh, Allie uh, at a poor project reef. What's up there, Allie? Reef is super lucky to have a badass dad and super mama Windsor along with lots of reef uncles. Oh, thank you. I know. There's ants in there, too. So. Yeah. Lots, lots of ants. And ants, yeah. yeah. There was one important thing that I should have brought up earlier when you said, how do, you, how do we carry on the legacy for Jake? One of the things that he really wanted to do, with, which was a big motivation of his to get me involved in the Solomon Island project, was to teach the locals how to preserve their reefs instead right. of using dynamite to blow it up. And yeah. his end goal was to leverage his contacts in industry, Ecotech, Neptune, big players, to contribute funds to build schools, to build roads, to teach you know marine conservation ah. at the front lines where they're taking the corals out to them. It's just a mechanism to put food right. on their, their plate. And so Jake had this vision, this real vision of saying, look, we're taking money out of their reefs and we're turning it into to cash. We need to give some of that back. We need to educate. We need to give those people a sense of pride in their own reefs. That's beautiful. And uh, that is really, you know, he, he had some big plans that were bigger than he ever got to really put, put into. Really play. did. Um, but that was that was where he was going. It really yeah. was. Yeah. yeah, I'm glad you brought that up because I I do remember that. It's not something we talked about a lot, but you do. He, he definitely hit the nail on the head with that at the end for part of his legacy. Yeah. So we'd love to see a school in the Solomon Islands or in Bali or something, you know, a Marine emphasis, uh, the, the, the Adam school or something. I, I don't know. Let's do, do that. Hey. Oh. Hey. Hey. hey, kiddo. Uh, we go. Oh, my ah. goodness. Oh, it's both. Oh. Here we go. <laughs> The Adams boys. <laughs> How oh cute. Goodness. How cute. Oh. Yeah. Well, listen, folks, um, I want to thank you so much for um, for doing this. This was a uh, very special, um, you know, live stream and, and really appreciate all of you. And I think that, um, you know, there's a lot of things that we can do to preserve Jake's legacy and, and, and to, uh, you know, try to pass that philosophy along to other reef keepers out there that have been in the hobby for a while and are just kind of getting mm -hmm. into the hobby and, and hopefully we can, um, you know, pass those messages along in terms of what we've been talking about tonight on the, um, on the live stream. So anyway, um, you know, again, thank you folks out there for, for tuning in to view and appreciate all the comments and, and the very kind words for, um, for Jake. So we will uh, we will reef on, right? That's reef the on. Uh, reef on. Reef on. Yeah, that uh, that is the goal, and cool. and we will um, preserve that legacy for end. Jake. Okay. Yeah, let's do a toast to Mr. Toasty Jake Adams. Sorry, it's an empty glass by now, but. <laughs> <laughs> Cheers, everybody. Cheers, Jake. Cheers. Thank you, thank you, thank you very much for doing this. Together, and thank you. Thank you. Yeah, thank you, Keith. Yeah. Yes, thank you, Keith. Thank you. Thank you, guys. Love all of you so much. All right. All right. Good night. Good night, Good night. Good night. Good night.